All right, we're on. Hello, oh, everybody. This One is AJ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. We got special guest and co-host AJ. Hello there. Which is uh, AJ V, right? That's right. That's v. right. My tag is the I am the Master Vader of the Master Vader podcast. You can check me out on Instagram. Uh, we love doing live streams. We love making content. Uh, we love to stroke out great ideas on the Master Vader podcast. So yeah, awesome. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a very interesting podcast, and he's one of the best people to hear talk about Star Wars. Um, and Game uh, of Thrones, for that matter. More, don't you have some more plugs? Don't you, We should get the other plugs out of the way if you want to. So I represent a company, ones. Zero Dark Nerdy. You can check them out on Instagram. You can check them out on YouTube. And you can check them out on Twitch. They are the Zero Dark Nerdy Podcast. I implore you to follow them. They're based in North Carolina. Um, they are bunch of great guys they're all older but they love this generation's culture they love watching new media they love watching superhero stuff they love watching animated stuff they love watching all kinds of movies uh super grateful working for them that's zero dark nerdy check them out on twitter instagram youtube and twitch and uh i'm super thankful to be working for them uh gotta get that plug out of the way because i'm you know they're they're just the best, and we're having a great time over there at Zero Dark Nerdy. And of course, once again, I am Master Vader. I am doing some outsourcing work for them, and we're just having f so much fun in this collaboration. I'm glad to he be here collaborating with my boy Patrick as well. Yes. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, the, by the way, we do all sorts of tier ranking videos on this channel. At Star Wars, we get. We're doing Star Trek, we're doing uh, Lord of the Rings, we've done Lord of the Rings. We do heavy metal music, grunge, you know, we do we do everything kind of that's popular culture interest to, to mostly me. I try to make it well-rounded. Um, and if you're into history, philosophy, mathematics, all that stuff, we do that too. Um, anyway, right now we're doing Game of Thrones, and it's been a long time coming. And I'm really excited for the first character especially. AJ, what do you think of Arya Stark? Arya Stark. Um, yeah, so these are all based on the TV show characters, and they are all represented very well. Um, they all have great plot lines. Uh, every, everything is just represented really well in the show, and I think seasons one through six are the premium Game of Thrones experience. Um uh, I think seasons five, five and six can be a little iffy, and they can muck up a few storylines with some boring content. But uh, there's some great stuff in seasons five and six, and season one through four really gets the characters perfectly. So based on all that context, I am going to give Arya a. Uh, I'm going to give Arya a. Uh, a solid but steady B tier. Uh, I her dynamic with the Hound really carries her. Um, her her storyline is you know one of the most tragic, um, but the resolution to the six years of plot lines, you know, it didn't really come to fruition. Uh, you didn't get a great payoff to her redemption. Uh, of course, in the later seasons, um, but it was a lot of build up with her. Her personality is great. Their season with the Hound was really great, and I got to give her some credit, but I can't give her too much. Yeah, I I totally agree. I think you know, obviously, season four, she, it's a more humble origin story. By the time you get to season five, six, it starts to feel like, oh, she's like a kind of like a superhero. Um, I really never fell in love with her arc. I love she's a pretty character, you know, and she has an interesting backstory. But does her actual character arc very um, exciting? I don't really think so. I think she's sort of overpower, op, overpowered by the end of the series, and it's a little embarrassing. Um, I would say a B at best. Sure, yeah, and yeah, there's just a lot of detractors, like, nothing really sticks out with Arya's storyline. There was so much potential, but, you know, when you got to the payoff, I mean, there just wasn't anything there. Um, 
but even it kind of so, ends up being boring. Honestly. Exactly, it's and, kind of a boring character. And in her formative seasons, you know, you're just waiting for the the payoff, and you never really get it. So it's a lot of waiting on this character, and you never really get a payoff. I gotta give it. I love the performance, and I love uh, what they were going for with the character. But uh, you know, it's just a lot of boring storyline and no payoff when you think about it. It's actually, it. tr- it's actually tragic in a meta sense because she really was set up for so much, and then it just started. She didn't really have that much relevance. So, absolutely, did, absolutely. Kind of did her. Uh, anyway, so with Brett B, who's this next one? Is this Cersei? Yeah, yeah, Cersei. All right, what do you think? Do you want to skip, sir? Do you want to jump in the sir, sir, or you want Yeah, to absolutely. Let's just go with uh, what they're given here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think great character. I, I kind of hate her. Agreed. I think an amazing character for the show. Yeah. Uh, she really rounds out other characters. Like you're saying, the Hound kind of carried Arya. Percy carries a lot of characters herself. Yeah, um, agreed. And she's very vile, but the, the acting is effective. Um, in supporting that vileness. And uh, every season she's in, she has something interesting to do. She has a trick up her sleeve. Um, maybe her lines aren't really that acerbic. They're not that bright sometimes. You know, she might not be the most intelligent sounding character. But that However, also, just the but I think of that, her character is yeah. really good. And I think, yeah, so there's a lot of strategy there. And I think when you're talking about, like, oh, she says the things that might not come off as super smart, you know, a lot of that might be intentional. And a lot of that is intentional because seeing the flaws of the character really um, are at the forefront. And that's what makes a great character is just showing their flaws while being so sinister. So I got to give a lot of credit to this character. Carries a lot of storylines. Makes for a lot of interesting dynamics and intrigue. I mean, really one of the hearts of manipulation in Game of Thrones. And one of the hearts of manipulation in Game of Thrones is some of the highest praise we can give it. Because Game of Thrones is one of the most uh, high-performing all about dramas. Manipulation. Yeah, absolutely. And all, all about, about manipulation. manipulation. And she, she really is, I think she is a perfect character. I mean, maybe... A, but I think that's cool. right. Everything that she did in the main, uh, in the main seasons of Game of Thrones, just really just put her at the highest level. Uh, any distractors in later seasons don't matter for how good the storylines were in the regular seasons. Whereas Arya, through all the good seasons of Game of Thrones, was building up. Cersei was perfect the entire time. All right, we're moving yeah, on. You wouldn't really have you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the series without her. Um, and you Definitely. like you said manipulation. I also feel like not just manipulation, but sort of um, statecraft and like um, sort of uh, uh, sort of domestic affairs. They all kind of tied in together in a really interesting web. So yeah, I mean, it's not like there's other characters that are just good at manipulation. She could do kind of a lot of different stuff. Oh, a well-rounded character. Um, I think an S. Are you going to put her an S? Yep. In the recording. Absolutely. Very good. All right, moving on. We are doing. Right, I don't know who's. We are doing Bran next. <laughs> Bran. Uh, similar. Oh, the, st- yeah. Wait. The, you know, uh, wait. Who is who is this one? Bran is one uh, of the I'm Stark not, um, children. He got pushed out of the tower and okay. crippled. He's the crippled one. Right. Right. Okay. Well, this one. I like his. He's kind of like Arya for me, really. Mm-hmm. Very interesting at a distance, but he's kind of sidelined for, for, for first four or five seasons. And he kind of he kind of has this sort of Deus Ex Machina where he shows up and saves everyone through magic. Um, and it's cool. Like he he pulls it off. He's got a cool look. But he does it. He looks like a like like he kind of smooth about it. He's not like an obnoxious character for all the responsibility he has to carry, but I just felt like it. Um, you know, he just it, it was boring. It was sort of unnecessary. It felt like a, a like a, they're tying loose ends together. Um, it wasn't really my cup of tea having him so involved in the story. I did like his story, but I didn't think it really helped the main. Story. Right, right. Basically, I think. I think Bran um, is the he's the catalyst that starts the entire story. 
So he sees Jamie and Cersei fucking. Do you remember that? Oh, I'm I'm losing some audio from you here. Um, uh, no, sorry, I didn't. I I, I was thinking. Sorry. Oh, I, I yeah, I got you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't remember that scene, but I, I, now that you mentioned it, I do remember that. Right. It, on the tier list, it shows the picture of him falling out of the tower. So, you know, the king comes to, when they, to Winterfell. Did Jamie throw him out? Was it Jamie who threw him out? Yeah, Jamie pushed him. Yeah, the things I do for love. Right. Oh. So, um, yeah, definitely. So, I think my take on it is that uh, George R. R. Martin, the original creator of Game of Thrones, has huge plans for this character and really is putting him in as like a some sort of last second savior of all, all the characters. It's just a lot of buildup. It's a lot of buildup for this character. Um, you know, such an underdog character. But in the TV show, you don't have that payoff. They, they gave up on the storyline. They gave up on the magical element. So in the formative years of Game of Thrones, in the first six seasons, it's all set up for another thing you don't really get payoff for, like Arya, except it's even more boring than Arya's story because you don't get the Hound. You don't really get anything. The only time you, <laughs> yeah, you no, really can no, enjoy his no. plot line is season six when you have the Hodor moment where he holds the door, which, um, which we had never seen in the books before, um, and, it was, uh, and it was translated to the show and executed pretty well. But again, I mean, that was a build-up scene, and you don't get payoff for that either. Um, and the other cool scene you saw with him was, um, was a scene of young Ned Stark fighting the Kingsguard and what happened when, um, when baby Jon Snow was born. So you have a great flashback in there, but other than that, it's all a bunch of build-up with no payoff but and the build-up was great quality for when the entire show was good quality but but i mean i mean it's just a lot of meandering around and it's a lot of what are we doing here and then once we get to the final parts of his story i mean there's really nothing there's no substance um uh, there's no, but you never get satisfied from anything this character does. So you got to give him some credit for starting off the story, but I think that saves him from being an F tier, and I think we can just put him in D because he did start the story. Uh, well, well, well hold on a second. I, I, I would think he's equivalent to Arya, even if maybe he rings a depressing note because his story. His, his his backstory and his side story are kind of you're right hurt. but i think his story was just more boring than aria's like by like 10 percent. so he's got to go lower than her in my opinion you how about c how about c because he is important in some way all right sure yep for the importance level yes we move up to c he's lucky he doesn't get f I mean, for how the last seasons both, of the show yeah, I think they're, both, they're yeah. both lucky I think they're both lucky they don't get Yeah, they get a lot of goodwill like, from the early seasons of Game of Thrones, yeah. All right, ready? Uh, okay, what about Brienne of Tarth? Well, dude, did you just guess that? Because she's the next character. Oh, I have the list. I have the oh, list you too. do? Okay, okay. <laughs> I got you. All right, yeah, Brienne. Uh, go ahead on this one. Yeah, I... Uh... Obviously, her introduction is awkward. Kind of this unwelcome, sort of weird person. And it, it, obviously, it's good. But beyond that, it's just sort of... She didn't have a strong role immediately. But then she sort of proves that she can is capable of getting things done. And she kind of moves around a bit politically. And then she yet she always has a sense of impressive integrity. There's, there's this mission to kill uh, Baratheon. Right, um, a mission to save Sansa. Oh, save Sansa from... I thought she was going to kill Stannis. That was her whole thing. Um, she would have... Am, am I confusing her someone else? Oh, she, no, you're right. She would have liked to kill Stannis, but it wasn't official. That wasn't an official mission of hers. You know, it's hard to kill a guy surrounded by thousands of armies, you know. Yeah, you know, that was that was her, uh, that was her personal, you know, mm -hmm. ambition. Mm -hmm. Was to kill him. And the mission... She was assigned was the perfect sign, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so her 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 uh, journey is is interesting. It goes in different directions. I think she's a good character. I think 
uh, the casting might be a little odd. I, mean, I don't appreciate her being like seven feet tall. Uh, she's supposed to be seven uh, feet tall. Awkward. She's supposed it, to be seven feet tall. Even, okay, well then. Okay, well then. Uh, okay, I will. I will stipulate that while she is seven feet tall, and I think that's stupid. Mm. It doesn't come into play that often in the show, in terms of what she gets done. Um, I think it's a very real. Humor does revolve uh -huh. around. I think it's a very realistic depiction of a woman, um, and I think she proves a lot of, I think she proves a lot of misogyny right. wrong, and she really stands. She, I mean, she's a great feminist. I mean, for, she yeah, does what she wants. Is, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A strong feminist woman, but she, it's awkward because the seven foot tall thing. Wow, you're really harping on the seven foot tall. I, you know, it's just I think it's who Brienne is. Um, you know, it's a part of her character. Um, it always has been. Um, and I think it's represented no, really well because I'm not, that's I'm always not saying she's, a, I'm not saying that she can't be a, a strong woman. I'm just saying, no, I know that you're just saying the I'm height is a little weird. Yeah, no, I know you're yeah. thrown off by the height, but like, um, you know, it's supposed to be that way. That's what the original creator intended. And I think the casting was quite perfect because every, all of the early seasons of Game of Thrones, she she fits into the story seamlessly. She flawlessly executes her acting role. Um, wh whether she's changing, fan. I mean, whether she's, I think, uh, I think she's a great. Uh, I think she's a great Game of Thrones character, and one of the only hero characters that we actually get payoff for in the early seasons. I gotta give Bran a lot of credit. I have no problem with problems with Bran at all. There's not a lot of detractors. Okay. I don't have a problem with with her arc. I think her arc, like you're saying, is really good. A lot of payoff, um, good build up, um, and and for starting and she, a good like for starting late into the series, it, it, it was especially good because you're like, how is this person going to become relevant? You know, which is like season three that she showed up. Um, Two. So, a good she was a good mechanism as as an, a later addition. Uh, I was going to say maybe a B for. And I was thinking of lowering Arya and lowering Bronn. Sure, right. we could do that. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I like B for Brienne. Yep, that's ironic, but um, we have B for Brienne. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Maybe she definitely doesn't... Um, I could see how, how she doesn't rise up to the level of maybe a really good character... I could see the argument that someone could make that would get her up to a really weird character. Of course, she's hampered by later seasons of Game of Thrones where you don't get payoff for any of the characters, and they're all very much wasted. Um, you and I'm just giving her a lot of credit for being on the front lines of the story uh, in its most right. formative years. Um, but I, I could said. definitely, no, yeah. She, I mean, I awkward know. beginning, uh, shifting allegiances. Um, and some clunky story uh, in the later seasons, uh, I think we could fairly put her to be, absolutely. But such a great feminist icon. Absolutely. And then what do you think for um, Arya? You think the C and then Bran to... Yeah, yeah, actually that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good. All and right, ready? Up next. Bran. Bran is next. Bron. I, like, I like this character. I, He's a charming character. I'm thinking B. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, he might be another B. I don't know. I think he's very um, charismatic. Kind of a workhorse character. He, despite being charismatic, he's also kind of a workhorse character in the sense that you kind of put him in different situations. He always has to do something. Uh -huh. Um, and he his personality ends up downplaying it. Uh, I think maybe oh, uh, a B would be at my minimum for. Him. I mean, is he really is he really necessary for the story? Like he he's mo largely a comic relief character but yet when he is in scenes he does seem to help out um, he does seem to have like a, an important physical um, presence right absolutely I think in the earlier seasons his personality really shines and really enhances all the political intrigue in King's Landing uh, while being that workhorse type character um, so you just have a great presence you have a great dynamic with Tyrion of course who's definitely one of the the S tier characters later on who we'll talk about, but I think Braun is great supporting and even when the show got crappy, I think his charisma and using him has a comic relief in like the simplest sense even worked better than 
what they did with all the other characters who were being wasted. So he was never a character that needed to be wasted. I mean, he was always one that was just kind of there, always supporting, always funny. So we can definitely give him a lot of credit. Um, But just never shined like some of the S-tier characters of the show because he wasn't supposed to. But great comic relief overall. Great personality in the show. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I would say A. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm down to do that. Let's say he's Mhm. Mhm. All right. Great. Um. Yeah. Anything else? Um. Well. Yeah. I. I mean. I feel like sometimes it, he's a little too strong of a character. Actually, like, like the series. Um. It starts to be about him, and then it isn't because he ends over or whatever. And then you're like, kind of the kind of ruins the, some like a section of the episode. Which one? Oh wait, that. Well, like, my favorite scene, I think, is when he he pushed that knight into the pit out in that random castle. When he when he was supposed to fight a duel, he just like shoved him into a like a like bottomless pit. Right. And, yeah, the moon uh, door at uh, at the veil. Yeah, right yeah, there. and uh, the moon yeah. door, right? The moon door. Yeah, the veil. And he, um, that was like a good scene. But then you're like, well, he's jumped the shark. Like, there's nothing he could do after that. It would be nearly as interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, well, time, no, he know. did, he did. Being a part of the season three intrigue in King's Landing, being a part of the Tyrion conspiracy and the death of Joffrey was interesting. He was implemented very well. Uh, and season two being a part of the the Blackwater and, and working with Tyrion. So basically him and Tyrion surviving King's Landing as the Hand of the King. Because remember, he basically filled the role of Ned Stark's guard. So Ned Stark was ousted and got okay. killed in the first season. And Tyrion and Bronn had to both step up to the plate. So it really let both actors shine, both characters shine, and they were very well implemented into what was Game of Thrones' perfect story So in those early so, uh, seasons. Oh, you know, and that's all, exemp- that's all exemplary, but I'm saying that after the, the moon doors... Yeah, I think all of the later the seasons episode. lived up to the moon door because that moon door fight was like... You know, it, you know, it was a little clunky. You know, it was first season, so they were getting their footing. Um, you know, I oh, think... Wasn't, that wasn't the first season. The Moondor fight was the first season, yeah. The one where the, the woman's breastfeeding? Yep, first season. And then the, That's the first season? Oh, I thought that was like the fifth. Yeah, I got you, first season. Uh, yeah, it wasn't until season five where he had the arc with Jamie that, that like, they like started doing really stupid things with the character and really jumping the shark in terms of like oh this is extremely goofy and comedic and not the same tone or 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 level of intricacy that the original seasons of game of thrones had but even then he was like charming and funny and you know it was nice to see the character doing something else so even in a really stupid plot line where all they wanted to get out of it was uh, comedic jokes I, you know that was still even enjoyable and then even when he comes in during the later seasons still very enjoyable so uh uh but you know i think his character is elevated by being in the intricate seasons of game of thrones and his personality shining especially working with Tyrion. it's the first season for the moon door because i'm looking it up and so season four also had the moon door but it was for a different thing okay (sighs) all right uh you want to move on Yes, yes. Um... All right, Lady Stark, oh, the Lady of Winterfell, okay. Catelyn Stark, um, former Tully this one of the Riverlands. Is, um, it, it gets kind of, this, doesn't she get at the at the wedding, the bloody wedding or yeah, whatever? She gets killed at the Red Does Wedding. she get murdered? Red Wedding, does she get killed? Yeah. She's not in the whole series. And up until that moment, it was definitely a, um, a you know, like a, a moral figure, a, a guidance, a, an advisor. You know, she was always sort of dictating certain things, and then when her son decide uh, the ultimate, make the ultimate call. Um, and she really helped out with Sansa a lot, you know, keeping her corralled while she had to. Um, but I think, as like a, as an entertaining presence, not very, not very. Good. But at the same time, you know, you don't always want every character to be entertaining. Um, you want them to be serious sometimes. And she did that. Um, 
I kind of wish we had seen more of her later on when you know, she didn't, I wish she didn't die as early as she did because then she, she, she could have honored her, her husband a bit more in some way and actually had seen some success of her whole mission after he died but uh, and was betrayed. Um, you, you think she's a good character or do you think she's sort of a whatever character? I think she's a good character. Yeah, very respectable, um, very important to the story, but where a lot of characters rely on their charisma and um, and their place in the story, I think her place in the story definitely outshines her charisma. Uh, the actress does fine, uh, but her role is great. Her as a um, as a a leader of a woman in in, in this in in her place in the world of game of thrones i think is very important uh it's important to have a figure like that how much she accomplishes is very respectable um and you know and you know the fact that her and her family lost just uh adds um nuance to it and adds that that uh character that character flaw type of aspect um that just really makes it uh her character and all the stark characters more nuanced where where they might lack in overt charisma um, like some of the funnier quirkier characters have so I love her place in the story and I love the nuance of her story and how flawed um, she is as a character and I love uh, her as a woman leader in this world yeah I like her uh, so with all that said she is a very vanilla character so I, would, I hesitate to give her an A right I, I don't think B. so either yeah 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 uh, is she better than Brienne or I think Brienne is better I think she's Slightly worse than Brienne. Gotcha. Brienne has a lot more um, dynamic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Dynamics. So, so where Brienne and Arya were building up through all the main seasons of Game of Thrones, and then had their payoffs in some of the worst seasons, her story was very intricate and very nuanced in some of the greatest seasons of the show. So, yes, I'd put her. She, in terms of Game of Thrones characters, in terms of characters generally, for a lot of for shows, I mean. You know, I would give her an A, but relative to Game of Thrones characters, I'm, uh, yeah, there are just so many better choices. I mean, she goes in B compared to all yeah, the other people. Yeah, unf- yeah, unfortunately, definitely. Very true. All right, great. <laughs> all right, bro. Next. You know oh, who's next. Who look who it is. The okay, I, 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 I'm interested in what your take on uh, the little Rocky. bitch himself, the little bitch of the Game of Thrones universe. Um, he's, he's he's so excruciatingly annoying. What a piece you of just, shit! You really, that's kind of he's a piece of shit. But that's the entire point. Oh yeah, that's the reason why the oh, show yeah. has such a pulse. And so you're kind of like, when is he going to get killed? When is he going to get killed? Your fingers are tapping on, on the fucking you know dashboard, whatever it is, the uh, nightstand. He's such a time. he's such a linchpin and, for the show. Everything revolves around him. Uh, for a long time, everything initially everything revolves around him, oh, yeah. and for a while, and when he does die, it's almost underwhelming when he dies. Actually, he kind of, or, oh, really, uh, I think his um, his death Rather was very poison. planned out by George Martin and very intentional. It was more realistic, and you know, was more realistic and it leads to what? Tyrion's down down spiral into a completely different character. It removes Tyrion from the King's Landing plotline entirely, so it changes the status quo of everything, pretty much. So I will give it credit for that, uh, because we are going to involve the death in our decision-making process here. Um, uh, I I think he could have. I think he it would have been better for him to have been butchered alive than for him to be been poisoned. However, the uh, the way he was killed when they had the old lady kind of do it uh, that was that was intriguing, and obviously they suspect Tyrion of being like incompetent. Not not helping. Did they think he actually killed Joffrey out of jealousy? Tyrion. Yeah. Did they think he was like plotted against Joffrey, or did they think he just helped? Um, no, they think Tyrion did it, and they didn't care who helped him. They just wanted to place the blame on Tyrion because they hated Tyrion because he was a dwarf and a disappointment to the family in their eyes. Because they yeah, it's were exactly and discriminating they just, they just pathetic their, people. Their image. This is preserved her image ousted. Right, yeah. So, so Joffrey is like literally perfect for being so despicable, but despicability isn't going to put you in the S tier. Despicability is going to put you at the top of the A tier. I think because I everyone's think trying to take you he down. Could have had more. I think you're right. I think he could have had more moments of nuance 
Uh, you know, I don't think he needed to have. You, you know, he could have been a better character, but why would you make the psycho, despicable character the better character? You focus on other people. You, you know, we we got. So you know, because that's what that's what makes Cersei. That's what makes exactly, Cersei so exactly. character. Is that he does have nuance, but Joffrey does. He does, and he that's doesn't need it because he is um, because of his place in the story. I think. So we don't. You know, I. Well, no, put... he he doesn't. No, well, you're you're. I mean, if you're gonna give him an A, you have to acknowledge why he's not an A. He's not an S because the characterization that they do give him is great, and he's a linchpin for the entire show, and uh, he has such an effect on the audience and the characters that uh, it's very meaningful presence. Uh, but it's not S because they just don't have to take the character. They don't need to do an intricate emotional scene with Joffrey because first he's not going to have that because he's a psychopath. But you're, you're viewing it. You're viewing it as it's like as, as if it's like there was a limit to how interesting they could have made the character. I don't think that's true. I think they could have made him a better character, and they just didn't. Um. And they, he's oh not, yeah, he's okay, a, yeah, I could see uh, that. I think he's an A minus. Um. Yeah, A. Yeah, I think A too. But I see what you're saying. I mean, yeah. if you want to say B, fucking, if you want to say B, fucking plus, I'd go for that too, because you like him. I'm... Uh, I just think his place in the story is just too significant to not have him in it. Yeah, no, he, he deserves higher than average, but I, I'm not convinced he's. It sucks because he's. Well designed yeah. Well, yeah. I think he's interesting and well designed for what he is, uh, especially for what um, the the creator intended for him. You know, he's not a character you see a lot in fiction and TV, but it was he. It wasn't that much precedent. Uh, yeah, yeah that's actually now. true. That's actually true. Like you don't see you don't see like an incest child in this position of power. And still have it work for the show, and still have people engaged. You know, that's a very, um, uh, you know, c kind of controversial type of depiction of a character. You know, it's hard to sell people on someone yeah, so yeah. evil and malicious and come from an evil uh, background like that. So yeah, I think all of those are in favor definitely of him being an A. The linchpin or the fulcrum. Yeah, yeah fulcrum. I, I can't yeah. deny that he's a, a pivotal character. Uh, right, okay, right, let's right. do A. Yeah, let's do it. Because he's not an ass, I mean, just because of how... I mean, his despicability alone, it, like, takes out a, uh, an aspect of new Sort of a streamlined personality, okay. yeah, it doesn't have That he has to have, right, exactly. Um, okay, uh, nice, let's move it along. Um, I, let's skip Dario Naharis. Who gives a fuck about Dario Naharis? Unless you want to do him. Oh, yeah, let's just go with the character. Okay, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, that's okay. actually good. We need to start filling out the shit he, character. Didn't he just show up? Didn't he just show up to Scrooge for, for uh, Daenerys, Daenerys for, like, no reason? Right, yeah. This is the first Daenerys like, character minimal, we're talking about. For minimal, about. like, momentum building on some sort of... He had one uh, great gave, scene. Maybe gave her more of a bit character. Right. What was right. that? What he, was that? He had one great scene outside the cities of Marine, um, where he fights a ch the champion of Marine and throws a dagger at the sword's head. Like basically headshots a horse and then kills this champion like immediately, um, uh, so that was a cool scene. Oh, it was interesting. Not... Um, and the uh, you know just to you know just to plug the books a little okay. bit, he's way more interesting in the books. But in the show, you know, very thankless role, very thankless role. Not a lot to do. His dialogue fits in with the intricacy of Game of Thrones. You know, definitely a person that you want to have in Daenerys' plotline, but really doesn't stick out all that much. And he got recast, too. And so. what did he do... What did he do to change the storyline? Did he do anything or to change Daenerys to make her different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just an influence on Daenerys, pretty much. Uh, he killed the champion, which got them evil? into green. Yeah, made her a little more evil, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's just kind of a kind of a really ornamental sort of mechanical character not, not important in any, in any strong concept right oh, i give him f i just think you could you have to get him lower than uh, the crippled kid right and yes. also yeah exactly also he got recast that's how useless his role was he got recast uh, from season yeah, okay, well, there you go it yeah. explains everything yeah okay davos um Good. I mean, he uh, he's a little dumb and boring and sort of, like, not very clever in his relations with all the other characters. Uh, he seems almost like a fly on the wall too often. Mm -hmm. 
kind of he kind of has an interesting liaison approach which Rathians his landing folk um I just don't know or what what do you call the, the snow who, 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 who are the fucking the Starks that's what I meant but he's not um he's not terrible he's just not exceptional uh, he's kind of an average character I'd say he's a C maybe, maybe above Arya minus. definitely I'll give him a B minus because he he's 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 got this sort of kindly avuncular presence. Yeah, uh, he's not he's not he's not unwelcome on the screen. No, no, you're right. Uh, yeah, his he's, he's usually yeah. around people who are interesting. Right, which makes him more interesting in 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 tow. But at the by the end of the show, though, you're kind of expecting him to have an uplifting kind of like heroic moment. He never really. St- Never really does anything outside his... Right, community. right. I mean, he's an old guy, you know. It's not like he can, like, kill the Night King or anything. Um, but, you know, I, the, you know, a little more payoff from him would have been nice. But, I mean, every character needed better payoff, especially if they didn't get it in the earlier seasons, which, you know, the earlier seasons felt like all payoff. But, you know, especially in Game of Thrones' formative years, you know, he worked under Stannis first, um, and then... It, you know, it wasn't until the later seasons where, you know, he was with John and he was used as comic relief, but he was also used as, like, a grounding character to, like, explain what was happening in the story. And his personality was, like, really great. But while he worked with Stannis, um, you know, he was, you know, he was, you know, he was fine. He was really solid. His personality was solid. Um, he definitely invested you in the Stannis storyline more because of his personality. Uh, he, he made the season three storylines just a little bit more meaningful. Um, you know, and honestly, he's probably the best part about the later seasons because he's just saying, you know, he's just saying what the audience is saying and being like, all this shit doesn't make any sense. Like, can we all be reasonable? Stuff like that. Um, he was a huge presence in the show post season six, but in the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones when it was all formative and very complex at the at the peak of its game of thrones complexity he was there and you know he was a fine presence and gave and fluffed up stannis storyline a little bit and, you know we love stannis the manis over here at the master vader podcast so i'll give him yeah i'll just give him as much credit as you do and just throw him in b uh i honestly think he was better in the later seasons uh you know he was really he was way more fleshed out but everything around him was crap in the later seasons so you gotta factor that in yeah, you know, he's almost like one of those characters where you'd like to see an episode just of him. Mm-hmm. Where he does something really mm-hmm. interesting. He never got that episode. There wasn't time. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel sorry for him. Uh, yeah. Um, well, you got a few of those episodes in season three. I implore you to go to season three. He has a lot of character-centric episodes. No, they weren't. I remember. They weren't that They weren't that cool. No, they weren't that cool. He was stuck in a prison cell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, they, 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 they cool. never gave him, like, a, a, an opportunity to be... Right, right. Just sort of... He's a lot like Braun. Would you not agree? Yeah. Well, he's like he's he's an insider version of. Yeah, and he, you know, Braun, you can or, shoot a he, dragon with. He's like he's like he's. Uh, shoot a dragon with. Yeah, like you know, in season seven, they use Braun, and he uses that giant crossbow bolt to shoot the dragon. A better example would be you can have Braun go on a little adventure wait, with Jamie. No, wait, wait, wait! Sorry, 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 sorry! No, 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 no! no I, need, I need to clarify. Who's the cripple? What's the cripple kid's name? Bram. 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 Yeah, I think he's more like Bran than he is like Braun. Oh, okay, but like better Bran because he's better supporting. He's more active in the story. Great charisma. Really yeah, he's involved with in the plot. Spot. He's an insider, very involved version of Brent, except he doesn't do anything heroic. <laughs> yeah, chill. He's sort of an no, he does. He does do yeah. heroic things. Yep, he does. Well, you know, what's the, what's one heroic thing? So it, I would maybe it wouldn't be seen as heroic, but he didn't know what he was getting himself into. But you know, he listened to his king. He listened to Stannis. Stannis told him that he needed to smuggle the Red Woman to Storm's End, and that's what he did. And he's the reason why Renly died, which changes the entire status quo of the entire story. So, you remember when the lady gave birth so to a shadow it? baby? Yeah, the, she gave birth. Yeah, that only happened why, because why did Renly die? Because it was a shadow monster did, did baby. Did, magic. He died from magic. Did she? Did she kill Renly? That's yeah. Basically, she she, she killed Renly, but it, Davos helped. 
So Davos smuggled her onto... He facilitated this sort of convoluted assassination plot. Mm -hmm. um, also, okay. he, well, that's, he, that's he, cool. he, he, he gave Stannis great advice. He was a great advisor. Uh, you know, just great, um, you know, great presence overall. You know, I gotta give him, I gotta give him that B credit, you know? No, I, I don't think, I, th I don't think he's as bad as Am. I think he might be as bad as R. No, I don't think he's that bad because he was involved with the intricate storylines in Game of Thrones and got to participate a lot, yeah, especially the Stannis plotline. He was more, he was more present. Mm -hmm. Presence helps. Okay, mm -hmm. give him, I'll give him a B minus. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's where I put him. All right, great. Um, I want to skip this Talissa, Rob Stark's wife. We haven't even done Rob. You want to do Rob? Oh gosh. Well, you wanna... well, we gotta we gotta do something. Just say shit character, right? Okay. Yeah. Pretty fake. So yeah, in Game of Thrones, in the books, you know, she was a lot more fleshed out. There was a lot more political reasons for it. In Game of Thrones, you know, Rob Stark kind of like destroys his entire legacy on like a little childhood crush. Which is very unfortunate. So the way they set this character up is like a childhood crush, and then kill her in the most like gruesome, unnecessary way. Uh, oh, what's the word? Uh, um, gratuitous. Like it was completely gratuitous and for shock value that they stabbed her pregnant belly. You know that was completely unnecessary. But you know, I guess it's good for Game of Thrones to have that reputation of shock value and stuff. But yeah, just shit character. <laughs> Acted, you know, she her acting was fine. You know, she fit into the story well, but you know, overall shit character. All right, uh, now we have Daenerys. Nice. Um, other than season two, I think she's an S tier or high A. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's always around. She's always making this important decision. Very. Uh. I I don't, know. I don't know if she's as interesting as uh, Cersei, though. No, not as interesting as Cersei. Also, there's an entire community of people out there that hate Daenerys, absolutely hate Daenerys. Can you see where they're coming from? Yeah, because she just sort of acts like this pretty doe-eyed girl and then who's always vulnerable and mm -hmm. at, 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 preyed on by men or whatever the fuck. And then she becomes like, you know, like, like, like Adolf Hitler. Oh... Well, that really, should not have really, happened. The way that that happened should not have happened. Um, you know, season eight of Game of Thrones ruined and wasted her character and did not understand any of what the character represented at all. That character was supposed to have a completely different storyline, and it was all just made into a easy turner into. You're Hitler. saying in the canonical representation, people think that she should be. Uh, wait, what? Sorry. You're you're still saying that. Even in the canonical storyline, some fans despise her. Yeah, even in the show. Yeah, that? and yeah, even in you know the books have her haters. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, why do you think? You think because she's a bimbo? Or why no, she because she's so disconnected from the story, and people don't think that she has as much presence as a character. You know, so that's you also know, true. You yeah, have, that's all you true. have this week. You you know, especially in the in the I first the book. Whole... Dothraki, the whole Dothraki affair, like really te Really what? Um, yeah. Whole Dothraki affair where she gets married to um right. Ego Baga. What's his name? Cal Drogo. Jason Momoa. Cal Drogo. I was like that whole thing was like really tedious and pointless. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they're just doing this because they want to include like the Mongol barbarian well, I get it. George R. R. Martin, you know, had his reasons for doing Doth. But it's great world building. I think it's amazing world building. The world building for sure. Just it was a, execution was. I don't really like Jason Momoa. Was that? I like. Oh, okay. Well, that's true. He, that's definitely. A good I don't actor. think. He, um, I don't think he he portrays um, his characters that he asked for very well, mm -hmm. and uh, which I guess is saying he's a bad actor, effectively. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of that I would I overlook that in relation to Daenerys because Daenerys also had a lot of other interesting characters revolving around her, mm -hmm. her Jora, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Um, but eventually, you know, she hangs out with like you know the uh, the, the the eunuch guards. Mm -hmm. She sort of rescues. Right, that's one of her and most iconic, are... amazing scenes. Yeah, that was really good. 
those guys are kind of you know bland, and then you know because they're they're unit guards that don't have num- they have like numbers instead oh, of names right, and such. Right. Well, they're they're in- I think and, the concept of that army is very interesting. Good world world building as well. And of course, uh, the girl that war- serves her is not very compelling. Um, right, right, yeah. I, I would say Daenerys, in terms of like you know on, on a minute by minute level, is utterly boring. But on like a you know hour by hour level, she's very interesting. She's, she's a kind of a more strategic character. Sure, absolutely, a very methodical, very build up character that you know, and you get a lot of pay up for pay off for her build up in the early intricate seasons. Uh, so yeah, uh, she definitely gets a lot of credit for that. Um, you know, I think the I think uh, she was strong she was on A. Was yeah, yeah, I think A is good. You know, if if there was if her pet potential was truly realized and we really had a good, well thought out, methodical story of the of her end of the conclusion of her arc, then she could have been one of the greatest characters of all time. But um, but right, like she had a lot of potential, and they just didn't have enough seasons. Just right, yeah, they gave up on the character and they oh. gave up on the story, but um, she is a great microcosm for what George R. R. Martin's characters are. Uh, you know, really special, um, you know, building up to something that we've never seen before, and she plays that role really well. Uh, just is a shame that the show didn't realize her full potential. But we sh- we saw a lot of her potential, and I appreciate the show for that, and I'm glad there's so many fans of her. Um, she's definitely one of the icons of the show. Um, but we'll give her top of A. I think she doesn't quite break into the S tier for how much was lacking with her. I would even consider B, but if you want to go A, I'll go A. Mm-hmm. Just for her um, impact on, like, um, on the culture, you know, you know, the Mother of Dragons. Everyone was, you know, on about that in the two thousands or two thousand tens. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to dis- define what would make or break A or A tier. For, for that kind of character, it's, it's right? That she is larger than life. Yeah, it's hard to really define. Her potential was lived up to a lot life. as a character, but there was so much that was untapped, and that's why she, for me, doesn't break into S. Uh, yeah, she's fairly bland, but she just she kind of is drives home the story pretty. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. A, mm-hmm. how bring it, bring everything. Right, um, right, right. That's true. That's totally true. Mm-hmm. A little bit bland, uh, but all this. Okay, the next story is the dragon. Great. Yeah, dragons. Uh, you know, they're, next is... they're all right. <laughs> I, I, you know, in the books, they're much more ex- well explained and thought out because you can see more. I feel of like them. in House of the Dragon, they we. Yeah, they're so show. much better in House of the Dragon. In House of the Dragon, they are really cool and well explained and well integrated into the story. In Game of Thrones, they're kind they're of kind a of lord ha- over the dragons over you whole game of thrones right and they try and, and then, pay it and off. then the end right and it's just sort of thrilled. right it just kind of is thrown away <laughs> so yeah these are going to be at the lower uh list um you know we don't get any we don't get a lot of context for them we don't get any explanation and by the end of the you show give it c or d d, or d probably d yeah who cares or about d. you know they're not characters and they don't explain them at all and don't really do anything. Not truly them. characters. They really shouldn't be on the list. For, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, you know what? Dave and Dan saw them as characters, the creators of the show. That's why they tried to kill them off and and pass it off as a character <laughs> dying. So the the creators certainly saw them as characters, but I'm not sure why they would do that considering that the dragons have no character or explanation whatsoever. House of the Dragon. They have no personality. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No in role. The, in the books, they have plenty of personality. George explains it because he's going to use them in an impactful way, but in the show, just really a waste. All right. Uh, Gendry. So who's this guy? Who's this next guy? Gendry. Gendry yeah. I forget. He was with in Arya's plotline. His... He was getting. He's Robert Baratheon's <laughs> bastard son, and he basically didn't really do anything. <laughs> he didn't do anything at all. He basically. Oh, okay. He was a good friend to Arya, and and a good friend to Davos, and that was it. So we can put him in. We can put him in D. What a weird, what a weird interstitial kind of guy. Okay, uh, let's uh, go. Put him in D. Yeah, put him in D. Yeah. Or F. Uh, D. He's fine. He's actually a good presence when he's on screen. Uh, this is just another. I can't see the icon. Is this another dragon? Oh, that's a wolf. That's um, ghost. John's wolf. 
Um, pro same as dragons. Any animal or anything should probably go in D. Because they do the same thing with all the magical creatures in the show. Alright. Um, and it's just the red... Who is this? The red... Is that Sansa or the red witch or the woman? It's not... Who is this? Oh yeah, the red woman. Yes. She was in the Stannis plotline with Davos and Stannis. Okay, I kind of felt found her tedious, and um, sort of lose, she. I lot. It was very easy to lose interest in her, especially when you found out she was like this old witch, that, like she really shouldn't be even be alive. You're just. Kind oh, of like, oh 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 okay, oh! This isn't I'm, the Red Woman. This isn't the Red Woman. My mistake. Oh, who is it? That's Sam's girlfriend. The the. Oh. You know the sister wives at oh. Craster's Keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. The sister wives. Yes, of course. Uh, okay, well, that's an interesting concept. Um, the execution is probably not that you know triumphant, but whatever. Um, you know, a funny character. Gotta be better. Gotta be like a C A. She wasn't in the show too much for what she was. Maybe top of D. I don't know. Top of D. Why well, don't you think C? Just because she's a little bit of an enigma, and then she's out, and then it's just like very parsimonious. What does that mean? It was just efficient with the way they used her. Um, yeah, sure, they used her pretty effectively, season three and four. Uh, of course, the later season wasted all the minor characters, so you gotta feel bad for her for that. Um, just like everyone wasn't, didn't live up, every minor character didn't live up to their potential in the later seasons, but... Yeah, she had an interesting place in the Night's Watch story, you know, you know, a lot of people would hate her and just call her an annoying you know, wife presence where she didn't do that much. But, you know, she she ran back to the wall. She fought a White Walker with Sam, you know. You gotta give her respect for surviving one of the most craziest enemies in the entire show. Um, you know, she survived. I give her a C, man. I think she's she's a wholesome girl that doesn't overcommit to anything and she's just sort of out of the sh series when she... But it's like, what? Why, why would I insult that? Sure. Just, that's perfectly... Sure, that's fine. That's perfect. No problem. Um, yeah, all right, next. Uh, um, uh, oh, is, is, this the, is this the sort of insult? Um, the no uh, penis, no, the no, pe the no penis, no crotch. Uh, un I mean, uh, right? Unsullied. Insullied, right? <laughs> the unsullied. Ins oh, clever. Yeah, nice. Um, uh, this yeah. guy is really dull. I mean, frightfully. Oh. However, he is involved. He is a leader of, of a company of soldiers. Pretty in, 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 uh, implement, you know, he implements that effectively and is instrumental to saving the, the uh, better than city. better than Gilly, right? That was the oh, fuck, who's that was the last character we just did. Yeah, he's he's better than Gilly, but he's still pretty lame. Yeah, right. Where so yeah. I feel like he could have been made. I feel like they could have actually made him. Yeah, right. Yeah, we got some cool um, scenes with him. Of course, in the later seasons, he's wasted and stuff. But great presence to have on Daenerys' side. Very effective soldier. I, I honestly think he's like a C plus character. Nice. Yeah. I, well, I think Arya's king of the C tier, pretty much for all that unrealized potential. I think he brushes right up on her. I think Arya kind of is a good uh, wall. They're kind of neck and neck. Yeah, they're, ne yeah, they're sort of in... Well, no, Arya kind of has... I think there's going to be people in between Grey Worm and Arya in C-tier. I think she's definitely the leader of the C-tier because of how important she was supposed to be to the story and how much she was wasted, so... Okay. Grey Worm was never supposed to be that important to the story, but a great C character, you know? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hodor. Odor, uh, poo, this guy's got a really, one really cool scene. The hold the door scene. A bunch yeah. of, yeah, the Hodor, hold door, hold the door, hold door, yeah, whatever it was. Hold the door, hold the door, hold door, hold door, yeah. He's just kind of retarded. That's kind of the charm. Um, is he a C character? Is he a B character? Is he a D character? Really, the, it's an open question, but I feel like we can resolve it through. Maybe he's in D because he's with Bran, and Bran's storyline doesn't go anywhere. And even though they had that one cool scene, they wasted it yeah, and didn't do yeah, anything. He kind with of, it. You kind of assume. Again, realized potential to cut mode. One really cool scene. Yeah. 
Um, hold on. Um, yeah, stop to your voice d is doing the Sonic thing. Um, you gotta fix that. Your voice. Your voice. Your voice. Your voice is doing the Sonic thing. You have to stop talking or fix your voice. What? You have to fix your voice. Hello? Okay. Yep. On Discord? Okay. I think that's better. I think you're back. Nice. All right. Oh, okay, okay. Keep going. You can cut that part yeah, out. Yeah, so what I, what I was... Cut me. Yep. Go ahead. I'll say one thing. Uh, Hodor, you know, great one scene, kind of a, as a one-off, is his last scene in the series, unfortunately. Everything up to that was him running around scavenging for berries to help survive, help Bran survive. Uh, or Bran, whatever. It, it, very tedious sort of background character uh, for the most part. Um, minimally charming, and I felt like I was kind of being treated like a fucking circus animal just watching him perform. So I guess I can't give him anything higher than a just sort yeah, of. Yeah. Plus, know, yeah, the just... way you felt about that character is totally accurate, and you have the you have the complete loss of potential with Bran's story. Like in the books, they have huge plans for these guys, and in the show, they threw them right. away like they were nothing. They treated these characters like shit and be. Yeah, I think in their like, build up in like turned into life, thankless a character roles. Like, that, like I do think that in real life a character like that would be probably more interesting than he even was on the show. So it is it is kind of heartbreaking. But yeah. Yeah, well I mean it's more wasted potential than the portrayal because you know you have him gathering berries and that's supposed to be build up for something and you know you never and you got one scene of payoff but that payoff scene was supposed to pay off and it never did. You know, you have the Hodor scene where you can travel back in time in a closed time loop, and that's just never addressed. And it's and it's really sad that those characters had, you, you know, they had, um, they they really were going to do something very meaningful, and the show just kind of threw them away and didn't uh, didn't uh, respect their place in the story. Absolutely, and um, honestly, I think I think uh, the, the second big flaw with the game of Series is that there are a lot of these side quests um, where the payoff is sort of minimalized, and the main uh, fault is obviously the crappy finale. But I think the second thing would have to be these fucking you know side reels that we're like subjected to. What would you say? Yeah, no, I agree. Yes, yeah, okay. subjecting to subjected uh, to reels with no yeah, yes. All right, next What's is the next next uh, is hot pie. Uh, he's an S tier. Uh, perfect character, perfect story, <laughs> perfect face, uh, sexy, hot, perfect character, sexy, well, hot. Perfectly well rounded character. Yeah, very he's very rounded. rounded. Yeah, exactly. Very hot. Uh, um, he's like. That's yeah. exactly what he needs to do no matter what. He, always on time, like all, always on task. Like his character perfectly is like supported. eating a delicious hot pie, you know? And uh, I feel like that. His, his name is. And the feeling he gives me, being hand in hand, I think that cannot be understated, and you have to give him mess. Absolutely. Okay, I'll give I'll because because of his unique charms, I'll give him a, an average. <laughs> no, but if we're being legit, let's just like stick him in. Let, you know what? Let's put him above Bran, because at least he wasn't like just a waste of time. Saying. At least he wasn't a waste That's of what time. I'm saying. Yeah, he's higher than Bran. He's efficient. Yeah, let's go. Good job, Hot Pie. You beat fucking Bran. That that should show how disrespectful the show was to George R. R. Martin. All right, and his story. Um, all right, we yes. have some great characters Hound. coming up. Yeah, the Hound is an S tier for me. Yeah, I I, I have to agree. He's a very human character. He has an intense you know, purpose built into everything he does. Um, he and it takes a long time for him to accomplish it. I do think that the way he ended up getting his revenge on his brother was a little. Oh yeah, that was terrible. No, no, no. They wasted his character and made it a cartoon. They turned it into a little silly kids cartoon at the end of the show. But when the show was at its peak and at its prime and firing on yeah, all cylinders with realism and grit, he was the goat. He was one of the greatest of all time. Perfectly fit into the world. Perfect survivor. Took a long time for him to accomplish it. He was flawed. He was. He was tragic. He seemed like a. He seemed like you were watching a movie, a really good movie, rather than just watching a TV. Totally like one of the the Darth Vader of of 
of Game of Thrones, but like the a Darth Vader that's yeah. so limited and in, uh, in what he could even do. Yeah, because you know the burned face and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like 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 the bitch made Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and he can and he can be funny, and he can and Darth Vader isn't funny. Well, Darth Vader is funny sometimes. Um, but uh, when he's trying to be cheap, he can be. Yeah. Um, like when he chokes out his officers, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you're you're good, bro. You're good. Like that's totally not- thanks you for bringing that to me. Now you're dead." Um, but the hound is like, you know, uh, you know, in, 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 in Return of uh, Return of the Jedi, you know what he get? He says to Luke to get Luke to freak out and kill. Him. Um, your sister. He says like almost. If you will not, yeah, turn yeah, to yeah. The yeah he's side, almost fucking Perhaps he almost like she going would. with them. He does have a sense of humor. Right, exactly. He does. He toys. Yeah, he does the Sith thing. Um, and the Hound is, like, funny all the fucking time. Everything he says is perfect. He says, uh, see you, NT. Great see you timing. next Tuesday so many times. He's like, um, here, here's my favorite impression of him. Ready, ready. I have a good one. I have a good one. Um, if, uh, if I hear any more words come pouring out your see you next Tuesday mouth, I'll have to eat every fucking chicken in this room. Uh, and then he goes, you're going to die for some chickens. Someone is. <laughs> Slaughters them. And you know in the books, that's actually the scene where he gets destroyed and beaten uh, like Brienne did. Uh, and in the books, you think he dies after that scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the show, they turned he it into Brienne. Dies. Yeah, almost yeah. dies. And in the show, they turned it into Brienne doing that. He's, he's actually a more vulnerable character in the In the... I think he's better in the show in the earlier seasons, actually. He's very well portrayed. Um, but in, in, in the mid in the mid uh, series, he's sort of he's a little too strong relative to the books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, anyway, I think he's S tier. Yeah, it's an easy. Um, S. I don't it's know. Really if, I don't know if he's overall better than Cersei, but in moments he. Yeah, sure. He in moments, but Cersei is kind of the queen of Game of Thrones entering, so you really need to be something else to uh, get to her level. We don't have that many. S tiers, yeah. I mean, went went through it. Like, We're going to in a second. Like, Are you ready? Add let's... that many S tiers, yes. Yeah. Let's oh yeah. yeah. It looks like it. Jamie Lannister. Jamie fucking Lannister. That's Jamie fucking Lannister. Lannister himself. Nice. Um. Yeah, he's S tier. This guy is kind of annoying at times, but it's all kind of in service to where the pl- where the where he's. Well, he is the perfect redemption character. I mean, his redemption is on par with the likes of Zuko from Avatar: Last Airbender, Darth Vader. Um, you know, and you get that, and you get that uh, character arc in real he's time. A broken man. Yeah, yeah. You turn, he's a broken yeah, he's man. A broken man. He's always... mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and, and um, I always, I always felt it, found it interesting when he's shown that book where he was like his name was mentioned, then his exploit unwritten, and he was like sad because he did have like all his exploits written down. Right, and let let's not downplay his backstory. And then of because... course he gets fucking. And then of course he gets, uh, you know, he fucking dies in like this weird kind of incestuous. Oh yeah, no, they ruined his story. He, he would never, yeah, they wasted his character and they ruined his story. But it's fine because he, they already perfected his character. His character already reached peak level, so it's fine that they wasted him and killed him because he already, he, he already achieved perfect character level in Game of and Thrones in the early seasons. Well, he, 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 exactly. He, he is a perfect representation. He was, he has exactly. He was a perfect representation. Represent of all of the nuance of Game of Thrones, all of the backstory and world building of Game of Thrones. He was a, uh, you know, he, uh, what's the word? He was a product of that. So, so everything that Game of Thrones is built on, Jamie Lannister encapsulates and encapsulates all the pain of the world of Game of Thrones. He has, he basically has the weight of the world on his shoulders, <laughs> which is crazy. I mean, killing the previous king and, and getting to, and getting to have a life Easy. after that is is you know yeah. that that is that is how you break a man. You put the weight of the world on him, and seeing that in real time was was immaculate to see play out. I mean, he's, like, he's like this. He's like this sad sack blues music. Always cool. Always and cool. at the same time, he does a lot of heroic things. That exactly. He just sort of fly under the radar. Because he really. Because at the end of the day, when he when his back was against the wall and he lost everything, he really was just a good kid the end of the day he just wanted to do what was right which sucks because at the end of the show he just decided to be an asshole that would never happen to his character ever um and if it did happen to his character then we'd actually 
understand why he would make that decision instead of him rushing over and dying within the course of an hour after building him up for over 60 hours. And they, you know, all it took was 30 minutes for him, his character to, you know, just be thrown away. So, but his character already beat everything that the last seasons of Game of Thrones could possibly do to ruin him. So, so let's give, we got to give him all the credit in the world. Jamie fucking Lannister, the absolute goat. Probably, is he my favorite character in Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah, he's my favorite character. Yeah, he's my favorite character in, G in Game of Thrones. Dude, he in Choice. in the books in the books he gets he gets his own chapters three books in and the Jamie chapters are some of the most well written story I've ever seen in my life. That's perfect. Ever read? Read and seen. What was that? You mean read and seen? Yeah, yeah, out of everything I've ever seen yeah. and read, yeah. Experienced, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I'll have to read those because I'm the problem. I audiobook them uh, all. Not my favorite character for the simple reason that he is a dude. I think that is a problem. But, you know, no one's perfect. Right. Um, That's just what kind of makes him a better character. It'll piss you off more, but it makes him a better character. Definitely. No, I, I mean... It, there are characters that aren't huge. Hey, if 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 getting rejected by your entire society doesn't make you a douchebag, what will? You know what I mean. So I think he's, but I think he's re he he's rejecting himself by being. Uh yeah, well he feels like he doesn't have a choice because of the cards he was dealt. That's everyone. Yeah, exactly. That's everyone. Yeah, and his is. To he, the... he represents a certain. He represents a certain cast of character that possesses this psychological frailty. That is sort of lost over by a kind of maybe toxic masculinity at times, but it, it, it's in service to sort of in, an intriguing character arc that is very watchable. Absolutely, absolutely. Um. Okay, up next. Wait, uh, uh, can you look at Discord the, real quick? I'll check out the chat. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, oh, you want to, you know, uh, want to do a part two, AJ? Yeah, we'll come back. Okay, sounds good, yeah. Let's do, um, Let's do outros. All right, so we're going to do a part two, and we're going to save this uh, current tier list. And uh, I think we have, um, uh, we'll probably have a little bit more gas in the tank next time. Because we have a little bit more characters to go through. But a lot of them are minor. We could probably just... Oh, so, without any further ado, um, thank you for watching part one of the Game of Thrones, your character team. And part two should be available in uh, due time, relatively soon. So, uh, ta-ta for now. Cheers. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Ta-ta and cheers. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ready? Bye. Right. Boom. All right. Come one, come all. Uh, round two of the Game of Thrones tier rank episode. And uh, we have special guest Evan Loganov uh, chiming in on the, in the, after the halftime show. And, uh, sure. of course, Anthony V is our um, co-host. Hello. Good to be here. Going to have some fun. Master Vader for life. And my name is Master Vader. Like... Darth Vader, but the master. Here we <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get into it today, Pat, and, and just get, and the halftime show was awesome. Glad to get to the rest of the list. I think we had some great rankings uh, on the first uh, part of doing this list, so I can't wait to finish up with this next one. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, this, uh, yeah, we have um, Anthony has his uh, own, uh, or AJ. As his own podcast uh, called the Master Vader Podcast, and a lot of it is about Star Wars. Um, and of course, this is Remembering Truth uh, YouTube channel or the Remembering Truth Podcast. Um, so yeah, listen. Without any further ado, let's just jump into the next character set. Uh, is this Jora? Who's this guy? The not Jora. What, his what, name. name? His name is Jack and Hagar. I almost forgot it, but I remembered it at the last second. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Jack and Hagar. It's um, like you don't even 
who he really is. It's just like a moniker. Like, he's a faceless man. Right, exactly. exactly. Yep. Well, this guy, I mean, he's kind of annoying because he never says anything, or he says, like, minuscule, you know, he says like utterances here and there. Yeah. He's, he's, he's kind of like, he's kind of like an ornamental character. He doesn't really need to exist. You could have replaced him with, like, a fucking scroll if you had to. <laughs> You've been watching the new Secret Invasion, then, I assume? Uh, no, what is that? Oh, it's the new Marvel show, and it's all about scrolls. Oh, weird. Okay, I'll look into that. What a coincidence. He's not even watching it. That's so funny that you mentioned scrolls, because there's a TV show on right now, doing all that stuff. Okay. So. Damn. Okay, I'll, I'll have to watch it. Yeah, so cool. I think uh, he's very cool in his first appearance, um, and he helps Arya in Harrenhal, and uh, that whole storyline was very cool. You had... Tywin Lannister, who is one of the best characters ever, um, and you had this guy as a complete wild card, um, and you had the story treatments were based off the original book, so you just had a very coherent story in season two. It was Game of Thrones, really, uh, at its best, and this character really helped that in the moment uh, in season two, but then the character come back comes back three seasons season later five. in season five, and he doesn't really do that much, and kind of just stands around and makes Arya clean floors for a whole season. So they kind of threw away all of his mystique and mystery and just kind of had him and his character pat out runtime. So I think that really brings Well, what I've, what I've always thought is you don't even know if the one in, like, the Bravos is the same guy who's just putting on a face to be familiar with Arya. It's right, like, true that. Either, you don't know. Either right? keep that completely hidden or... Or or reveal something about that. Give us some. Um, give us a satisfying answer. So we never got any satisfying answers. The character felt inconsistent, and there's lore reasons. There's in-universe reasons where that might not even be the same character. Exactly. So his face literally means nothing. Um, yeah. So I think he's definitely on the lower end. Um, I don't think he quite makes it up to C with characters that actually do things throughout oh. the story. He's really kind of like a decorative like sort of... I like the word decorative that you use, yeah. Um, I, I don't know what... I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I think he he's sort of... Uh, he... In a lot of ways. Um, and a lot of characters aren't just... This character literally is just a face. Mm-hmm. It's a face that doesn't move a lot. Right. I think that's, and if they're going to do that... Helpful. Then, then commit to that story instead of just not showing us anything. So I think we could put him in D or F. Like, what do you guys think? Because it's just. Uh, well, I would say D because at least they, they, you know, it's intriguing the way they set it up. Right. The, I think that it lacked parsimony, meaning like it lacked efficiency. I think not but as good as Hot Pie, but better than Bran. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. Bet. Yeah. yeah. All right, next is Gior fucking Mormont. Gior Mormont. Carl um, Tanner. Yep, Carl Tanner. Of skull of Gior Evan knows Mormont. what's up. Evan knows what's up. Let's go. <laughs> That's one of my favorite quotes from the show, and clearly it's Evan's one of Evan's favorite quotes as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Brilliant acting. Brilliant story. Uh, hilarious. Uh, so what are we going to do with better, Gior Mormont? I mean, he's, I mean a, a lot of people sure. feel he's relevant because he's related to Jorah. I mean, he, he was not like, the first few seasons before he was killed, but he was never, like, you know, super, super prominent and, like, um, you know, like like being a central character in the, in the narrative, you know. Mm. But he was there, you know. and He had a strong presence. Yeah, a strong he was, presence. He was, he was totally an asshole and possibly even an idiot. But... No, he wasn't an <laughs> asshole. He was nice to John. He really was, and he and he took a risk when he sent the Night's Watch to go north, and it and it failed. But he had to take the risk because the realm was in danger, and you know he's. Oh, I guess I'm confusing he, him with, was the, with the other guy. With the other guy who was the asshole. Uh, his son. No, Alice. That's Alistair Thorne. Oh yeah, that's Alistair Thorne. Yeah, not Alice. No, no, Alistair, yeah, Alistair Thorne, Thorne is different. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, you're right. This guy, this guy was cool. Yeah, yeah this guy's he, cool. But he did, he did get murked. Right, right, right. I think we can put him in C, safe C. Um, why not B? It was okay. Um, I, think I, he... I think he can go high C. I mean, he really doesn't rise to the level of B character because he was a bit wooden. His acting was 
exactly that. You no, know, exactly his acting where... was good, but um, you know, he's just so he's way more insignificant to the plot than the than the higher tier characters. But okay. but a really good average character, in my opinion. Uh, any other thoughts? No. Yeah, I mean, in a way, he's also like the 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 face. You know, he's he's like, isn't his acting isn't really like. You know, it, um, dialogue driven it's more just sort of his attitude mm. I think that's why he's not a B you know it's the guy from Succession right I don't watch that no, it's, no that's not Sam no it's not oh no, it really guy, it no. isn't that's not that's not uh, really yeah, you're thinking Brian Cox and Brian Cox wasn't in in oh, fact there's an article about why he, James, James there's Cox. an article about why he wasn't Whatever. in Game of Thrones or Harry Potter and he, he had roles pr- provided to him both of them down um, I think the guy's name is James Cosmo played uh more James Cosmo? Okay, I didn't know that. He was in uh, Braveheart, I think, too. He was in Braveheart, yeah. He was the... He was in Troy, was I the think. the father of the best friend. He was, like, that was his... He was also a warrior. I think he was also in Troy, the movie. Who was he in Troy? Yeah. No, who, who, who was he in Troy? I don't believe... Him. Oh, yeah, he, he was, was in he Troy. Was he was in Troy, yeah. Who was in... Um, who, who was he? I think it may have been Agamemnon. I'm not sure. No, Agamemnon yeah, I don't was, was Brian Cox. No, I'm talking about James Cosmo. James Cosmo wasn't Agamemnon. I think he was one of the people in Troy. Yeah, I forget, but yeah, I don't remember any of the leaders of Rome's name in Troy, but he was in it. Oh, he was. He might have been Agamemnon. Holy shit! And then uh, Brian Cox was Menelaus. That's right. Mm-hmm. And... No. Yes, to your Mormont actor. It was a different. James was Cosmo a... was different. It was Glaucus. I guess it was, was a different, different. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some guy called Glaucus who I don't even think. Epic poem. So anyway, let's let's continue. Sure. Um. Yeah. His son. Um. Jorah. Boy Friendzone. G- yeah, Sir Friendzone. That's a classic one from the uh, old honest trailer days. <laughs> Um, oh, that guy! Dude, that yeah, guy he got friend zoned like by Daenerys, like crazy. Uh, and he, he ended up being kind of a dick and betraying everything he stood for, like twice over. I can't give Jorah too much credit. I can't though, really blame him though. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he was selling slaves in the north, um, and then got exiled from the north and had to go escape across the country, which was completely justified. Like. Uh, he is a very unusual, like, like arc. He doesn't really like, have, seem to have a moral compass except for the fact he's... It's weird, like, the narrative is fighting sort of against, by like, his, like, the... Like, it, it love interest. And, and, and um, for whatever reason, it actually is very, like, powerful actor in strong character. But it ultimately doesn't pay off. Um, I would think either a B or an A. I thought he was a pretty uh, interesting screen presence. I and think he's, he's I think he's B. He's got great screen presence. He's, um... He's great in the Daenerys storyline. Um, yeah, but it's weird. But like, because Daenerys, like, like for a lot of her storyline, was like fighting against like the institution of slavery in Slavers Bay, and Jorah was like he was exiled for selling slaves. Right. You know, probably... So you have that complexity there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That deeper character level. Um, yeah. Um, in the books, he is like very wooden. In the show, the actor really gives him a lot of personality. Great presence in those scenes, and it really adds to the subtext. When you have his backstory and you have what he's doing with Daenerys, so he's a very present character, very important for that side of the story, and very prominent. I think we can give him B, absolutely. Honestly, a lot of uh, Daenerys's emotional realities are sort of um, like revolve around Sir Jorah in, in some way or another, either directly or indirectly. Right. Kind of helps the keeps the engine going. And his betrayals are cool, you know. Like they, it sucks for him as a person, but like. It's it's unique to have that in a character, you know, a couple of betrayals, you know. It makes it more complex, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yep, yeah, I'll give him B. Um, also, one of the better sword fighting characters. Yeah, he had a great sword yeah. fight with that Dothraki guy in season one. Okay, up next. Uh, Dothraki, we have... Cal Drogo. Himself. Cal Drogo. Uh, I feel like he doesn't have... So much of a personality beyond like being like you know sort of a savage or like a like the noble savage sort of you know mythos. He also you know? goes out like a bitch, but that's George R. R. Martin. He's like fault, this sort of so. yeah. He's like this combination of this mythological noble savage, as well as like sort of like a Mongol horde leader. Yeah, like you know with like a humanitarian. Yeah. 
Um, Not too much to this character, but he definitely inspired Daenerys, I think. Yeah, uh, he's he's pretty wooden, I remember. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue. It's there. But he's cool. Maybe. He's cool, and he inspires yeah, Daenerys' story. I think we can give him above. I think we can give put him in average. You know, he served his purpose. Let's just see. Oh, yeah, see. Definitely, um... See, he's good. I think better... Him. Wait, is he better than Grey Worm, do you think? No? Yeah. Yeah? Well, no, Grey Worm has an actual, actual, like, real character development and, like... Right, right. I feel like Grey Worm... Yeah, maybe Grey Worm is, like, is a little more plot, sympathetic. Like, you know. and like Evan's saying, he has a development. I yeah. guess I guess you'd have to give him, like... I'm gonna put and... Gior behind Cal Drogo. Are we okay with that? I kind of put him at the front of the C tier list, even though I think Arya. No, I think I no, I think he rightly should have been the front actually, because I think he does have like a strong better than story. Arya though. He should at least be second. Yeah, second to Arya. No, I, I no, because Arya. because I, don't you agree that Grey Worm is better than? Uh, oh, I don't think Grey Worm is better than that guy. No, I, no, oh, I okay. think Grey Worm is a, is a. All right, sure, I'm down with that. Yeah, average character. Sure. Um, all right, Night King. Uh, Another me, person doesn't have a personality, because like like a. Like a weapon of pure destruction is what he is, basically. Yeah, you know, the Night King. He's another. He's definitely a, a mechanical character, and he really just sort of. Which one? Which one? There's just a Diabolus ex machina that forces all the characters to um, which character? evaluate which their character? social standing. Yeah, the, the guy, the ice giant guy. The, the Night King. Night King. Night King. Yeah, the Night King. Um, I want to give him F tier because of how the show thoroughly ruined all the potential it had. It's really sort of this boogeyman. To me, that is is never like a strong character trait. Like it's all set up, it's all boogeyman set up, and there's there's supposed to be something deeper under the surface, and we're supposed to have our minds blown. And they had us wait eight years, and it turns out he was just some punk, and he died instantly. It, it turns, yeah, well, you know, like, yeah, he was a giant like waste was, of time. I do feel like I, I was hoping that he'd like it'd be harder to kill him. Like he just oh, you can kill him the same way as exactly. All the other. They made us wait eight years to find out that he just goes out like a bitch. So. Uh, I have to give him a well, tier. Let's be realistic. If if there were if there wasn't so much pomp and circumstance, um, expense, excitation, would give him a higher grade. It's just because that they're they make you think that there's going to be something more to it. Right, and there was. I, I don't know. Don't you think it's the same with the dragons, though? Yeah, and that's why the dragons are in D. <laughs> well, why would this character be? Than the dragons. Because at the least dragons. the dragons did stuff and their potential was shown from the beginning and then they fell off. Okay, so here's my, my hot take on this is that... Or cold, uh, cold take. take. Yeah. Or cold take, really. Yes. Is that the... um, In fact, it is a traditional outlook. Just that the ice giants in, like, say, Nordic lore aren't particularly sociable with... So... I would think that it makes sense that he wouldn't want to interact. Sort of, you know, have like a, a villainous sort of explanation of a grandizing speech that he makes before he is killed. He doesn't make would, a speech. No, I would, it, but I know. So I'm saying I, I think it makes sense that he wouldn't because he, he has no love for humanity. Right. He has no need to connect with them. Yes, something. that's absolutely true. But, you know, bad writing doesn't excuse like something that might be be going on in his head you know as far as the audience is concerned the, the he cares about have you nothing seen Pro, have he, you seen uh he, have you seen prometheus the, the movie sure yeah yes. because the the alien they meet this like alien that's supposed to be the prometheus aided mankind he did the same thing kind of i mean he effectively he just they thought he was going to say something ended up just going crazy and right but they didn't him. set that plot point up for eight years to to you know that was just a in that movie, Ridley Scott set it up as, oh, this is what's happening. In Game of Thrones, they promised every single year that there was something deeper, that there was something more, that there was so something complex. And after eight years, they killed him okay. in one episode instantly. And you could think, like, oh, it's all Fair under enough. the surface. But but if you saw Point. everything Point. that... Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean okay. there's just okay. so okay. many That's detractors. Fine. There's yeah. just so many detractors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta give him F. <laughs> I just have to. He's worse than fucking... Talisa and because of season I would give him a D minus just because I I don't I never I personally didn't let's give him him. some credit for building up good tension in the earlier seasons but exactly even he's like he never he's one of the the only character that probably never speaks a word other than the animals I think and yeah the unsullied I don't know no they speak 
Okay, up next. Um, L Lanza Lannister. Who named you some half-wit with a stutter? It's kind of weird, like, he, in the first two seasons, he's, like, this insecure sort of weirdo, and then he just returns as, like, a religious fundamentalist. Right, know? yeah. Definitely a <laughs> mid-character, like, just kind of mm -hmm. there. Um, he, Tyrion would manipulate him, and then the high step. He was basically a piece on the chessboard to be moved around. Um, mm -hmm. And the bad writing never caught up to him. It almost caught up to him, but uh, he was kind of used pretty effectively um, mm -hmm. as a mid-character. So we can give him... Uh, in C, maybe like lowest C. Was he the one that they tried to install as like a puppet for this uh, in a second round? And he jumps out the window. No, 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 okay. no, nope, nope. That's Tommen. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Tommen. Um, okay, next, Littlefinger. Oh, Littlefinger. That's got. Oh, I gotta, he's good, man. I mean, he he's always up to stuff. And it, it's definitely, it's like the definition of Machiavellian. You yeah, know? Absolutely, absolutely. He like is the first. epitome of Game of Thrones. Like the master <laughs> manipulator behind the scenes, manipulating everyone, moving the pieces on the chessboard. And even though his story was pretty much ruined in season seven, everything that he did in the original seasons just elevates him to that perfect yeah, character. Really, level. he and Varys were kind of the game masters. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, game master showed us what it meant to be a game master in this world. Showed us what it was like to be a perfectly written character in this world. We got to give him mess. Doesn't matter how he went out like a bitch. Does not matter with how good he was originally. So a very a very human character. You, Absolutely. You sympathize with him. Yeah, very Same simple. Kind of very simple motivations. He loved Catelyn. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah. At least he, he claimed to. I think he was more into Sansa by the end. Right, right, yeah. He, I think he might have I think used he that just, as an excuse. Uh, it could have been an excuse for all of his misdeeds. Something is my theory on it. He has his own creepy motivations, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we good with S boys? Yeah. Sweet. All right, Lysa Aaron. <laughs> oh, my God. Directly. Crazy. Yeah, crazy crazy on. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, she was directly related to Littlefinger and, like, his plot line, but ultimately was pretty much only in, like, four episodes she, in the entire show, and she yeah, was a crazy psycho. Was that the hooker? No, she was the girl, remember the, um, the, she was breastfeeding her kid during the fight. Remember we were talking about that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, yeah, she was, she was a strange one. Um, <laughs> give her a, uh, C, just because she was short-lived and and that kind of is serviceable. Oh, well, yeah, but it's not not very appealing, right? Sure. Yeah, I got you. Uh, see. Um, next is uh, Grand Maester Pycelle. Dirty old man. Dirty basically. old fart. Um, yeah, you know this, this guy... This guy is a good character. You, yeah, he's a, yeah, this guy's a good character integrated into the story very well. Um, but he's just so slimy and, like, gross that, like, you also hate him, which is good, but I think the hate should be considered into making him a little lower, like B. I don't I feel think... like a lot is a lot of comedy effect as a character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's actually good comic relief, and it's really sort of tragic the way he, they they cut him out of the show. They, they had. Really... I do regret this friend to kill him with all the. <laughs> yeah, that they was all... so cool. Well, well, was he was he a, a proven pedophile? Yeah. Yep. A okay, so it make... okay. Well, it's his job. I don't think he was a pedophile. He just he just liked you know sleeping around with like hookers and yeah, stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, you know what? Maybe he wasn't a pedophile. Yeah, he was just a hooker guy. Yeah, just regular hookers. That was a kid. He, was he, a he abused the kids guy. though, remember? Because they, they killed him. Oh. No, no. They, they killed him just on, on the commands of Kyber. And I don't, they, I don't know why, you know. It's not like he was, I don't think he was abusing him. At least they didn't show that on screen. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'll give him, I'll give him an A, honestly. I think he's up there with... No, um, I'm not, he's just not central enough on. of a character to deserve an A, I feel I'm like. I'm with about. Evan on this one. Okay. The funniest okay. secondary character. Uh, yeah, I'll put him B, because he's integrated into the plot really well and fits mm -hmm. into the good Game of Thrones writing. Marjorie, one of the baddest women in Game of Thrones. Natalie yeah, Dorman yeah, is one like, of the hottest people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's like... It oh, she was great. Be like, yeah, uh, she unfortunately was just murdered. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it shows like you can be like a player in the Game of Thrones without being like a totally shit person, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, perfectly integrated in the story into the great writing of the earlier seasons. I think we can it's give like, Marjorie a lot of credit. It's like she, she, 
it's like she knew what was up with Cersei. Like she was going to blow the place up. It's just they wouldn't let her leave. Yeah, you true. Know, yeah, and hey, that yeah. entire sequence, character-wise, was a little bit messy writing because they were just making that all mm-hmm. up. Uh, so, and we, and I think this is one of those cases where that doesn't detract from the character because they were so well integrated mm-hmm. in those seasons. So, yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got a hot take though. I really do think that Davos, going back to the first, I really think Davos is. A, because he is a what pretty, is a what? Sorry, you cut out. Is a C. I think he's a C. All right. Um, so where where do you, if we put Marjorie somewhere, I can move Davos to. C. Um, or Marjorie's B. Let's give her B. Mm-hmm. Evan, you think, kind of I think top of B. I think the top of B is great. Yeah. yeah. Colorful and it has a, has a pleasant personality. Is always trying to do the right thing to people. Right, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a little bit too much of a simple... Well, Pollyanna yeah, like... and sunny sidey, but I, I think it really kind of welcome season she was in it. Um, then, of course, Avos, by comparison, I think he's really just sort of like this ornamental fly on the wall. Um, he's I, I, he's sort of just... He's harmless. Really he's, 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 say harmless. he's basically like, Marjorie's basically like the master of charm offensive, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then Davos, I don't understand why Davos... Really don't. He's he seems like a fly on the wall, harmless, pointless. I think he's like a voice of reason, sort of. You know, I feel can like can be, but it's like it's still. Like, but how far is that going to get you in the Game of Thrones world? Is what Pat is saying. Well, he, he's not like a player so much. He just advises other players. Is the thing, you know. Which makes you a player, but to be fair, yeah. but but you know, uh, I think yeah, it, I I would give Davos credit based off his charisma and his performance alone. I think he's pretty well integrated into the show. But I think we can move him off of B. I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, especially when the last seasons of Game of Thrones totally just go off the rails and his character becomes even more useless. Like, yeah, we can can keep him in C. But I do like his performance. I like his presence in the show. Um, (laughs) All right, next is Masande. I shot the was kind of boring. I mean, she's a little boring, yeah. but she's kind of bad, and she makes it so that Daenerys can have some important conversations. Like, oh yeah, she had those handmaidens in, in the first two seasons that died, and they need someone to replace them, sort of. You know, right? Like, it was in the books, but you yeah, know. oh yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it's like I, the relationship with Grey Worm is. It seemed a little bit forced. I don't think that that wasn't in the books. I remember reading. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah was she, it was. For, in terms of backstory, was she always supposed to be just like tenant? Yeah, time. and the books, no, yeah, totally she was. Up from from, um, from uh, Astapor. He's like, she, they gave her to her as like, a, like when she tried to purchase the Unsullied. Right, right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I... She has a great presence in the Daenerys pro- plot line, I think. She... Or, um, I think her charisma really carries her a long way, but she definitely doesn't get above C-tier. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just uninteresting. Yeah. yeah, that's why I thought. Such an uninteresting character. Yeah. And they ki- the, the, the killing her was such a waste. That should have been Barristan. No, great one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'll put her like next to Gilly as like one it's of those female bureaucrat. characters. That don't... Um, okay, um, Marcella. Um, oh yeah, Marcella. I, the way she died was terrible. It's like one of the most touching moments in the show, and she just dies. You know, right? She had, like just bleeding from the yeah. nose. And she was never in the show anyway. So you got one moment with her, and then. And then she's gone again. So he was yeah, like a back, yeah, basically a background character. Yeah. Guys, are you, are you hearing me eat these? No. What are you eating? I can't. Uh, you cut out for ripe, a second. I don't know what you're eating. Ripe kiwis. No, no, you're good. No crunch to those bad boys. Let's keep going. Um. Okay. So yeah, Marcella doesn't get above a D tier. She's a background character. Uh-huh. Except for like a little bit of plot in season right, five. Right, right, right. And that that Ned was completely OG, the go the OG bro the original player of the game the original. So my movie. favorite character. How do you character. not rank Ed Stark, Ned Stark S tier? I mean that that's just like you'll you know have to. Is he everything that great? Uh, that uh, is not. At the same time, he doesn't he doesn't play the game. That was his. Yep, and no, it shows the game. And he's just too honorable for his own good. You know, right. it's his mercy that that killed the king. Is what Varys says to him, and that could not be more true. Um, yeah, Ned can. Uh, well, oh, hold on, hot take on Ned. Let's make an S S tier for him. Nice. What a go! Just kidding. He's going in S. Um, I think he is. Is he above Littlefinger? Yeah. Is he above Sandor? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, he's above Sandor. Is he above Jamie and Cersei? I would say so. I think he is the best character. He is definitely, like, the epitome of what it means to be a Game of Thrones character. Perfectly active, uh, acted, uh, great charisma, um, one of the most important elements in the entire story of Game of Thrones. And it's a little season, too good, honestly. Well, yeah, that was the point, point. And, and the fact that that was the point and the fact that it ended so tragically for him and everyone involved – uh, into a ripple effect for the rest of the story is. I mean, like people, people say, like the real game started when Ned Stark died. You know, everything exactly. else was just... exactly. No? Right, right, right. And Ned could have changed the entire game, but you know, and that's. Yeah, I would love why. to see that's why it's so compelling. He, he, over, I would, even he, he, Sean Bean's acting is good. You could really have like a Game of Thrones with just him. Yeah, he needs to be in more stuff. Right. Yeah, we love him. He's in a lot of stuff, but he just he kind of fell out. You know, he you know fun fun trivia. He was in the um, Oblivion. You know the game Oblivion. He was he was like one of the main characters in that. Nice. Yeah, Sean Bean. Sean Bean, yeah. He, he was he was like the the inher- he was like the, in- the secret inheritor. It's weird. Like Sean Bean's been in two, probably two of the most important fantasy franchises. And he gets off in the first volume of each with Boromir. Right, exactly. <laughs> He's known for having I been know. killed on screen in like that seventy roles. It, it's like he actually, it, it's like he's he done was, a lot of stuff where he hasn't been killed. It's like he was perfectly made to be that character. Like God created uh, Sean Bean to be those characters, and it worked perfectly. We can all tell that it was it was amazing to see him in both those things, and he was great in both. He's Borneo really known for amazing. He's known for dying. He killed in I think seven or so. But a George R. R. Martin death means that the entire story revolves around it, and that's what makes it one of the most compelling pieces. Well, in of this case, in, ever. I mean, I think he's known for having significant deaths in all the work, all most of the work he's in. In this case, it was the most significant death I think are oh, yeah. even more than Boromir because I mean Boromir was had a very important death, but like. It's the fellowship was you know, right. The story would have gone the thing. same way. The story would have gone the same way, right? It's not like George R. R. Martin. Think, yeah. The Starks literally all got effed, and there was a huge war just because of Ned. So yeah. The other thing is the um, if you are a Sean Bean fan, there's a show called Sharp from the '90s where he plays a Napoleonic War um, rifles platoon leader. And he he doesn't die in it. He's very good at it. He, it's like you know several seasons of that. So if you really do like Sean Bean, there is an option for you where he doesn't die. Oh. But for the most part, he's just this incredible actor who dies in every fucking movie. Right. Oh. Well, in yeah, Game of Thrones, uh, you get a lot of him. You get a lot of him in Game of Thrones, which is great. Yeah, yeah, very a uh, very rich character. It's a completed story. Anyway, um, S tier, probably top of the heap. Yep, top um, of the heap, absolutely. And now Varys is next. Varys, Varys the, the goat. Varys the spider, the goat. I would think in S two, yeah, he's, he's he's with Littlefinger. He's right up there with Littlefinger. He's li- yeah, either a little bit worse or a little bit better. I can't. It depends it's on like the day. Not a, it, it depends like on the day. He's not like a clear villain like Littlefinger. Just depends like... on the day. Right, he's more honorable. Right. Well, Varys uh, is yeah, slightly more honorable despite uh, his unsightly sort of, you know, inside manner. But um, is he a better character? I don't know compared to Littlefinger. I think Littlefinger. I know Littlefinger is just like you know Littlefinger is just like a devious, you know, self-serving person. Well, Varys is like more ambiguous. So I feel like we know what they want. It's some ways make them a better character. Some ways, you know, because everyone knows a little. That's with Varys. I think think it was ambiguous with Varys, but I also think it wasn't. Like I knew that he was, he was sort of overly reliant on his ability to weave a story. He had no real other skills, so he was just doing that, like you know, at a thousand percent. Whereas, but you kind of knew it came from a place of just sincerity. At the day, well, he keeps saying, "Are we serving the realm?" It's like at first, like the first season, it's like a lot of people don't believe that. It's like by the last season, a lot of people say, "Yeah, he probably is just you know looking for the best person." You know, I always kind of felt like there was that the, the, he had too much to lose by being evil. He, 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 like everyone thinks they're good, right? And so for this guy to be evil, I just felt like it would be so predictable. So he had not, had to not be. Um, well, little... it, it didn't matter because his character got wasted by bad writing when everything was all said and done. Um, but but 
up to season. That's also true. That's also true. That, you have to look at him up to season four. I mean, the culmination of his storyline for what was given to him in the show was him That's saving right. Tyrion. Um, yeah. Uh, and banishing himself and exiling himself. He thought that was worth it. So, And I remember a quote that he said. Well, he had some really good scenes with Tyrion. You know, it's not like like season five and six, right so. he was okay in those seasons and then things started to go off the rails but you know and he was much more benevolent in those seasons and i think that was intentional and I, and I think a quote from season three which is at like the show's peak is that little finger would burn the realm to to sit on the iron throne and very i thought season four was the peak but i mean oh uh, uh just like season three four like when game of thrones was like on you know firing on all cylinders uh, I I agree. I think four is the. Peak. What, what, what's, the what's the quote? What's the quote? The quote is Littlefinger would s- see the entire realm burn just to sit on the Iron Throne. Varys wouldn't. Is that was that? Yeah, and, was yeah, and Varys would. That's uh, um, yeah, and said it, that. Varys said that. Oh okay, yeah. Well, the, yeah. I mean, Varys uh, is a little more um, of a better, na- a good nature. Uh, but I think Harris is a character that is more interesting, Littlefinger. Right, because um, he's more ambiguous, right. He's more ambiguous, but I also think, uh, like you're saying, I think they wasted him more. They did with Littlefinger. Right, right, been... right, right. Okay, yeah. It's complicated. Yeah, right, so they're neck and neck. So it depends on the day. It depends on the day for who's better than who. But they're in the exact same spot. They're right in the S tier next to each other. Because of what they were able to contribute. Could have been a lot episode. more interesting. Oh yeah, but the show wasted all of its characters all within the course of them, yeah, three weeks in 2019. It was devastating. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. They ruined everything over the course of like yeah, six yeah. weeks. It was my Ooh, worst nightmare day. ever. Um, Alright, let's uh, keep it moving. Could've Theon. Speaking of Wee. people that got ruined... Um, oh yeah, but it's like Theon. I actually love weird. how they like they made his character into a complete like degraded shell of himself, and you were still invested in it. It's like that was that was actually an achievement, you know? Right, that, exactly. And where did it go? You know, I mean, well, he got killed by the Night King, but I mean, well, yeah, least... but even before that, like he was kind of just working for his sister, and then he yeah. was kind of just like around, and then he died. <laughs> You he know, was working. There wasn't a lot there. Wait, do you mean his real sister or his adopted sister? That was his real no, there's sister. only one sister that he has. I mean, but I think the weak storyline was brilliant, though. That that was just you know, yeah, they yeah. had to keep caring about someone who was just a completely degraded shell of their former self. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he was working for his sister. I mean, he was basically like in. No, mm-hmm. no, Yara. No, he worked with his sister, uh, with her. Not slave. No, he, he was supporting her claim yeah, to the he was Iron supporting Island. supporting her claim to the Iron Islands. It, wasn't he coerced into doing it? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, he did voluntarily. Okay. He went back, Mom. Right. His his brother did look almost enslaved. So he saved Sansa. So the culmination of his arc in in the great seasons of Game of Thrones was saving Sansa. So With the Iron Islands and the Iron Isles, what they called, the Iron Isles, it was really like, you know, you, like he was really like, Abused even after he was castrated, he was abused in the Iron Isles, right? Before, no, that was the Islands. That was with Ramsay Bolton. Yeah, that was Ramsay Bolton. I thought he was. Abused like, I, I love about working. him. It's like he, his dad was abusive. His dad was abusive to him. His dad. It's like, that's it's like he did horrible things by betraying Rob and you know killing the farm boys, and then he just becomes a completely degraded shell of his former self. And they manage to keep you invested in his character. Right. You know? Exactly. So, what do you think? And what then, do you think? The only redemption way? for it. Is um, I'm thinking he, solid A or B. The only oh, redemption like, was in like the later seasons, right? Exactly. So yeah. I think we can give him B for really uh, the ki- they were able to invest this in the character in those early seasons, and he, he didn't got have his, a lot of there he was didn't have a lot of there. payoff. He just didn't have a lot. Of payoff, Not a ton right? of payoff, exactly. But all the build up was. I could great. almost see a C, honestly. Top of C. Top of C, I'm thinking. I like that too because of all the wasted potential that you see with that character. Yes. Um, Podrick. Podrick is literally a fucking goat. He's a sex um, master. Who is Podrick? That was a squire for Tyrion uh, Tyrion and later Brienne. But I feel like Podrick is one of those characters, like, like, no one cared about Podrick in season two, most of season three. And you kind of slip. You know, right? He kind of grows on you, right? Throughout the Uh, 
Right. Was he funny? Oh, I don't get it. What was his deal? Yeah, he was funny. He had great <laughs> chemistry with Tyrion, and he was a sex master. They sent him the, to the whorehouse, and the whores didn't even make him pay because oh, no. he, he did it was such yeah. a sex master. He sang for the whores. I think what happened, you know. I think that I, I read something online that that's what you know. What? He didn't fuck them. He sang for them. I think was what happened. Oh, you know, that's interesting. Is that a book? In the books, that no, never even happened. Theory. That's like a theory. You right, know? right, right. Yeah, it's a good theory. It's funny. Um, right, okay. Well, he's still a goat. He's got a great person. He basically is the same even in the bad seasons. So uh, we can okay, we can I'll keep him, him in like yeah, we can keep him in like B or something. I think B is safe for him because he's just you know uh, mean. Uh, 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 he means well. A character that means well, kind of innocuous, but always a great presence. I think. And then who's next? Ramsey, uh, Ramsey. Oh, Ramsey Holy the shit. best villain. I think he's an S because I think he was yeah. probably the most uh, S- captivating villain. I think you guys are right. Um, there, sure that is. subplot he, with the no, he was in the show for a little while. He wasn't like short lived. He yeah. was like in a, yeah, four th- seasons. Yeah, three to six in like in Game of Thrones is prime, and uh, at the beginning of its fall. In Battle of the Bastards, I think like he had probably the best death of the villains. You know, he was he was in like, in, in, in every episode. He was in a lot of episodes. The whole not in everyone, but like a good amount. Like like, it's fun. Yeah, he seems to me like he wasn't in it that much. No, he was. Uh, he but was. maybe it's just Huge it, was, it was every once in a while that they had him from back. Well, in season five and season six and you know those seasons were going off the rails a little bit the, my only problem with <laughs> ramsey is that like, is that his his storyline culminated in a very messily written plot with stannis and like stannis lost to the weather um and then like and then like him controlling the north and then Littlefinger selling him Sansa, even though that didn't make a lot of... So there was just a bunch of messy writing decisions surrounding him. But I think the way things culminated in Battle of the Bastards was so epic and so satisfying that we have to give him credit for a satisfying end of a villain. And of course he was in Game of Thrones during the peak season. So I think despite some messy writing uh, that he was involved with, I think every all the good stuff that he was involved in uh, keeps him at that S-tier villain. That oh yeah, liked. probably had the most payoff for any character unfortunately it was in the mid-season well actually it was like the best of the mid-season so even that was able to end on a high note you know yeah so, so, total high so, note so yeah, do I you want to give him an s yeah and i think he's better than the hound i'll give him i think that's well, oh, i don't think so at all i think let's not give him too much credit we uh, better better than little finger and varus i would no, definitely not better. He's no, because he's just a raging psychopath, and he's he's, Worst of he's a great obstacle in the way. I think he's a great obstacle, but he's not like the intricate master manipulator that Littlefinger and Varys are clearly. So I think yeah. he's below them. We'll look, we'll look top of A then. Top of A, I, I like top of A. Maybe below Daenerys. Above, I think. I'm... Yeah. Below Daenerys. Oh, I think above Daenerys. I think Daenerys is. I think below uh, Daenerys. Evan, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, we're going to put him in A and uh, behind Daenerys. So, sorry, Pat. <laughs> uh, but maybe uh, if another character comes up, you could uh, make another case. Um, all right, next. Renly. Renly. Uh, he was never given the chance. I feel it's unfair. He was just killed way too early on, you know? Yeah. It kind of sucked. Uh, yeah. Sort of, po- sort of pointless. Ooh. Flying the wall. Uh, he had um, a great death scene, and he was important to yeah. the story. In the early season. Yeah, I know, but he's just uh, you know, figure to me. Um, I would say it's a C, right? Sure, I like it. Where on C do you think? A uh, higher, you know, higher, probably uh, above the uh, Mormont. Sure, but below Arya and Davos. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Oh, Rick on Stark. F tier. Okay. Not even a yeah. character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not... like basically for the first few seasons, he's just like some background character with Bran, basically. Yep, like, exactly. And then the, la- the, the, the last season is just like a plot device to bring John to the Battle of the Bastards, you right. know? Exactly. You know? Right. Yeah. They never did justice, you know? No, no. 
I, I think the books will do this character much more justice. Yeah, I think it, Davos is going to the island where he's on, I think. Sky Ghost or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Sky, yep, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, but in the show, Wasted never did anything, never had any payoff, pretty bad character. Um, uh, Rob. Pat, what do you think of Rob? Uh, Rob Stark. Uh, the Young Wolf. Oh, he's got a, you know, had a lot of uh, expectations on him in his own life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel like he didn't pay off in his own life, but as a character, he's actually pretty crucible. I'd say maybe a B or A. Maybe not an A, but... Is B. he, would you say, he's below Marjorie? He's in between, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, he's the king of the north, I mean... Gotta give him some credit, right? <laughs> above Marjorie. I'd say above Brienne be above Marjorie. I mean, he's just kind of made, like, Ned 2.0 in terms of a huge tragedy, basically. Right, exactly. And wasn't as good as Ned, of course. Um, loved the performance, and he was in some of the best seasons of Game of Thrones. Just didn't live up to Ned totally, especially in the tragic aspect, and, you know, and in the, like, charisma uh, and all that stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think top of B is good. Um, oh, the kid that was sucking on the mom's tit. Oh, dude, no, 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 no. Give him, a, give him a D. That takes balls, dude. Oh, Sorry for any actor who has to go through that. Fair enough. Just be like, That's yeah, you know, that was my role. Yeah, I was in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was in actual... Well, no. Rick on... I feel, so, I, feel, I feel so... Like, it's so embarrassing. Actually, even for the mom, it's... It's not embarrassing. Acting. It's, you know, it was for a show. Yeah. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's embarrassing. Sure, he was sure. a kid. Yeah, but you still have to fucking, like, you know... You know, you know what? It was a prosthetic tit anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to give him F. Yeah, please, Robert, just, uh, please just let me give him F. Rathian, right? Yeah. Bobby B. Bobby, Bobby B is a S tier. S tier. Perfect. S tier. Perfect. S-tier. He's, like, he's like a party. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. Go back. Give, give, the tits, give, give the tit sucker a better one. Do you want me to give him a D? In the, in the bottom of D, because I just feel so bad for them. No, you shouldn't feel bad at all. It was a prosthetic tit, and it was... First of all, first of it's all... It's not like he got bullied. Point. First he of didn't... all, to be fair, to be fair, he was in it for one scene. It was funny. You can't give him to F. I mean, there is, there is a... Well, he can press the... All right, fine, right. fine. Yeah, he has that one scene over Rick on. There you go. Yeah, yep, I agree with that. All right, Bobby B. Like the frat boy king himself. The frat boy, most goaded king, hilarious. Every line he says is iconic. Literally, I quote him pretty much every day. Um, Your mother was a dumb whore with a fat ass. Did you know that? (laughs) (laughs) We're sharing war stories. Gods, this is country. Oh, God, yeah, he just kills me. Every line he said was perfect. He was perfectly self-aware of himself, did not give a shit, literally just wanted to drink himself to death. Literally perfect character. Um, Such a product of his time. So perfectly characterized. Uh, No complaints. Bobby B's an S tier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Iconic character. Pat? Okay. Uh, Yeah, I mean, he's definitely an S tier. He isn't in the show that long. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's, the whole point is his death causes, you know. True. Very, where you know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll put Jamie and Cersei above him, because they beat him. They're the ones that beat him. I mean, I guess, I guess slightly better than the Hound, man. Yeah, sure. That's why I just put him. Yep. Okay. Bobby B, the GOAT, welcome to S tier. Wasn't even hard for him to get up there. All now right. we have Bruce Bolton. Bruce Bolton. The perfect mix of cold and calculating. Yep. Like, Ramsey's just a pure psychopath. Well, he's at least a little bit more strategic, mm-hmm. you know? The, yeah. Strategic and ruthless. Um, very well characterized. And he beat he beat the Starks. And you got to give him some credit. He's got such an iconic... Personality, it feels you know, like. He, like. He's really less... He's really a lot less predictable than Ramsey. He's, like, he's got the iconic deep voice. It's probably, like, second only to Tywin, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's... he's, he's he... Um, they didn't write him as well as they could have, but he, he liked very... Right, very his writing could have been a little better, but he had a great presence. Yes. I think um, maybe... Should he be above Rob in, in B? Yeah, I think so. I hate to move should Rob I, I think out. Rob, I think Rob, honestly, it's perfect honestly, I think he... Beneath the, the redhead girl. Beneath... She, wait, we, we don't have the... You mean Marjorie? 
Archer. I think he's just beneath her because she was a very welcome screen presence. I don't think Rob really was. Yeah, Rob was more of a chore to get through. Totally, <laughs> I can see that. Now we have. Uh, we have Sam. Sam Tarley. Samuel Tarley. Who oh. doesn't like Samuel Tarley? It's like the nerd everyone wants to have a happy ending. You know? Uh, yeah, sure. I like mm-hmm. that. Um, you gotta give Sam some some. Yeah, respect. Sam the Slayer, bro. He took out a White Walker. Yeah. Um, he had a great presence, and even in the terrible seasons of Game of Thrones, his presence never went away. Did he do the White Walker? He like like he throw, stabbed like... it in the back. Okay, with like a spear. Yeah, while it was going for the baby, he like with the obsidian spear because uh-huh. the obsidian okay. kills it. He literally was playing Minecraft. He's literally a gamer. <laughs> uh, I think Sam the Slayer can get. Um, I think he can get A. Not A. Play he could a. if we wanted to be super generous. Oh, he's he was he was like you saying he was a slog to get through. He was in like not that many important subplots. All right, uh, bottom of B then. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I mean, well, hold on, well, let's evaluate. I think he's a little bit better than Audrey, maybe. Oh, actually, worse. I I kind of hate Sam and oh. All right, you want to just put him next to Gilly in the C tier because they're they're the exact same. No, that, that's they do not the same fair. Things. Yeah, Sam, you just put him no, next to Sam Gilly. Sam is, is Gilly would be nowhere without Sam. I mean, he, he, she's she, he's you know. Well, they are tied together, you know. Yeah, yeah but put him at bottom of B. I, I whatever B, A or B. I'm not gonna accept anything lower than a B for Sam. Yeah, I think B makes sense, but put him like bottom because I don't. I don't know, like, but like. Audrey. Theon, Davos, Arya, Renly, Gior, I think they're all better than Sam. What do you oh, that's guys That's a good think? point. Yeah, put him, put him Evan? before uh, Would you agree? Yeah. Grey Worm. Yeah. Before yeah. Grey Worm. Or no, no, ahead of Grey Worm. Ahead of Grey Worm. Done. Yeah. All right, good. Um, oh, Ilaria. my God. The Sand Snake Lady, El- El- Ilaria Sand. She was great when she was first introduced with Oberyn, and then they... Yeah, com- she was like... Like this sort of carefree, sort of promiscuous woman that she just focused on revenge. Yeah, you know? and then they turned her into a bad guy, and she was a horrible bad guy. They made everything up as they were going along. The terrible villain for the show. I shit tier, shit shit tier. She's up. She's all right. She's kind of bad. Um, shit tier. What do you guys think? Um. Why was she so bad? She was kind of. She fun. didn't do anything. Her storyline made no sense. Um, her acting made no sense. Give her. Um, give her um, yeah, she's worse than all these characters bottom, that I, I see. Bottom of C. Bottom of C. No, at least, no, at least no, absolutely she, not. Not bottom of C. Is this what I'm thinking of? This is like the, the hot girl that like, that like kill people and failed. And mur- her sister just got murdered. No, she she was like you don't even know what really happens to her. She just like she's just left in the dungeon, you know, while her daughter. Yeah, she like dies off screen. Like yeah. Yeah. She's... That was that was that was a somewhat compelling subplot. No, it, it was in a, it was in a later season, so it was shit, and nothing around it made any sense. Well, it was out of nowhere. I kind of fell into it though. I'll be honest with you. It was, was season. Like... Eight. It was like season seven. Um. Yeah, well, give her, I'll give her D. I'll give her D. Best I can give her is D. Because she... She's the mom she, of the daughter? She she was in a bunch of sub, subplots that were completely yeah. original to the show, and they were all so bad. That was her only use, to be in terrible That's subplots. Her. I gotta give her F, man. Mm-hmm. The, the subplots were that bad, dude. No, I actually really liked the Dorn subplot, but only because Jamie and Braun were super funny. Every character around them was terrible. Yeah, but they're 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 supposed to be dumb women. Nope, they're not. They're supposed to be smart, capable. In this world, they would be dead if they were dumb. Already. Hmm. That's why they're portrayed as dumb. Is I think it was just sort of they were supposed to be like. If they were portrayed as dumb, then that is completely de- demeaning and makes their character further shit. Oh, I think I th- going on and on, but like, I I think that they were supposed to be how they were presented. I th- to be like. Stupid. Well, no, I think I think her her character is like a combination of like I think it was Ariane Martel, yeah. basically in the books because they they cut her out so they had her revenge storyline be like it's kind of weird. They, they bungled the Dorn plot line. I mean, yeah, the whole plot they, they line, the, everything with Dorn is line. bungled and could have been done better. Um, mm-hmm. All the characters the, were wasted. Put her, in D, put her above Hodor, 
no, put her. Put Why her is Hodo in D? The top of D. Put uh, because he didn't do anything and like. Uh, but it's like yeah, everyone loves Hodo. You know? Yeah, her, her but like, the guy not really. Really. He doesn't need to do anything. He's Hodo. You know? Yeah, but like literally, he was him. never in the show. Like he was only in like three scenes. No, no, he's 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 in the show consistently with Bran until. Oh, no, Bran. You know, like, she's beneath Bran. I mean, between Hodor and... Uh, because, uh, like, think, think about it. Like, Bran's better than Hodor. All, all these... Hot Pie's better than Hodor. Like, um... You guys hate this woman so much. Weird. Oh, she sucks. She is... She is probably represents the worst parts of Game of Thrones. That's why. I think... Made, I think made up plot Hodor lines that work. are terrible. Oh, Oberyn <laughs> is nothing like... Oberyn's okay, gonna be okay. S. Don't worry about yeah. Oberyn. But just move her, move her above Hodor. Hodor was annoying. No, Hodor's totally better than her. And she was more annoying than Hodor, and Hodor could only say one word, but... Hodor's like a purely It seems like, character. Pat, you really want to give her some credit, so I'll put her above Hodor for you, I mean. It's like Hodor wouldn't even fight anyone unless Bran was controlling his mind, you know? It's right, like, at least Hodor wasn't a vicious time. asshole, like this chick. This chick was a vicious asshole that killed a kid. Let's put her above Hodor. Let's be done with it. I'm not happy with it, but I accept it. Um, Sansa. As long as she's in D. <laughs> um, Sansa. Um, Obviously a central character. I just always found her really whiny, you know? Yeah, especially in those first well, seasons. Wasn't it really that welcome of a screen? Well, like, even through yeah, other like, roles. Like in different ways, you know? She's kind of bad. Like, mostly, like nags John and stuff like that. Kind of a B character, really. I mean, but, like, she she's the show so often that. This is hard. This one's a hard one because in the later seasons, she like, she really comes into her own, even when the story yeah, is terrible. A... Yeah, um, and in the early seasons, she's just a kid and she's very whiny, you know. So, but she's still sort of like that in the later seasons, just like she nags John and stuff like that, you know. Right. I mean, she's whiny in an assertive way rather than just you know a complaining way. Uh, we could put her next to Arya. I feel like they had very similar stories. Like they both were being built up this whole time and just didn't get that big a resolution because the show ended poorly. So we put Arya in C. And I think Sansa could go um, right Sansa, next to her. But Sansa is um. I think she's at the height of C. I think she's I think she's grouped with Arya. Really? Yeah, her the... you know Sansa story like all of the culmination just doesn't go anywhere and um You're right. You're right. She's sort of the indwelling right. Arya. And like the by the time she finally comes into her like own and like really owns the character, the writing is as bad as it's ever been. I would, say, like, I would, I would say above Arya just because she is more ass- yeah, more sort of does more things. Yeah, plays the game yeah. a little more. Yep. Um yeah, I I want to give Tormund. Sansa more credit, but I really can't. Okay, up next, this guy. Tormund. Tormund's a goat. We love Tormund. Complete, complete Tormund comic. Tormund is hilarious. But yeah. great comic relief, but fits in really well, even in the really good season. So I think we can give him A. Okay, low A. Why not? Low A. Um, Shay. Shay. She was actually really good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the characters they improved from the books and the show. Right. Like, yeah. Okay, gosh, who was she? I don't even know. Tyrion's, Tyrion's like, hooker like, girlfriend. Like oh, yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah, she was kind of in, kind of intense. Wasn't she was she? intense, oh. and she was very integrated in the story well, and had a great sense of self and great charisma. She fit into the show well, well honestly. Bounce off. I think Tyrion. she's a B minus or a C plus. Yeah, B minus. Yeah, better than Pycelle, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pycelle gets a John lot of credit Snow. for being like a sleaze bag and all the intricate. She gets even more. Show. All right, we got John. John Snow, probably like the the main main character, right. like in. Uh, okay, so by. so he was great, and then they he was brought back al- alive for nothing, died for nothing. He was whiny. He was Aegon Targaryen for nothing, and he was not whiny. That was well. He's basically like the archetypical sort of hero in Game of Thrones. He got all that, and they wasted him. And they wasted him. Resting. Well, you know what, Pat? You're actually right. She is my queen. She is my queen. That's all he said. That was his only line in season eight. Now that's whiny. So they set him up and made him this Targaryen king, and just wasted him. Like, like it was the ultimate waste of a main character. Ever in all of fiction. 
So, Supposedly. but we got to give him more credit than that because Kit Harrington did such an amazing job. He was yeah. so good in the earlier seasons. He was our the battle where they fight important. the wildlings on the wall important. was amazing. Yeah. Um, like the his some of his feats were just really amazing. John Snow in his prime. You give Daenerys top of A. You kind of give John Snow top of A. Yeah, we'll give John top yeah. of A. Yeah, because we're all the people, all the people in S tier didn't aren't ruined by season eight. These two are still really good, but ruined by season eight. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. High Sparrow. High Sparrow. I mean, he's just like a like he's like a villain that's got some like a understandable motivations. Like he wants to cleanse the realm of you know hypocrites. Sucks, he sucks ass, dude. Yeah, he sucks. It's like he's like vile. He sucks. Yeah. Like, you know. No, but he, he's like he's like a wrecking ball. He he's goes like after. Maniac. He's like a religious fundamentalist, but he goes after like bad people he's as well. Religious, but worse than But that. I think he's he was fucking... chasing power himself too. I think he was selfish. And you don't really know his motivations. Yeah, you never really do. He, he could have at least been you were genuinely motivated, but he's just a fanatic. Was the this guy is not punk rock. I would give him a fucking <laughs> thing more than a C. I think. Oh, but is he, I think C is, is all right. I think C is all right because he did a lot. He just was kind of like well, yeah. integrated in some really nice. Um, until you know, pick up yes, a slack. Hey, hey, we can put him next to Lancel because they were kind of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Well, how is he compared to Pycelle? Oh, uh, Pycelle's way. Pycelle's like the better version of him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Writing wise, um, in the show, he's still Pycelle's still alive, and the High Sparrow is kind of the reason Pycelle dies. <laughs> but Pycelle is the better version of the High Sparrow because he's the sleaze bag. That was in all the best seasons. We deserve. So, yeah, exactly. High Sparrow, C tier, next to Lancel. Yeah. I would put him, I would, of, um, curly haired girl. Uh, who? The girl's name? The, uh, the breastfeeding woman? Oh, the woman right next on the. Uh, Masande? I put, yeah, exactly. I put him above her because she's very boring. He's, he's <laughs> not. Sure. Yeah, at least he does stuff. So. Okay, Stannis, Stannis. The, Stannis the Manus. Stannis the Manus. He's a goat. He's a goat. I mean, come on. He, yeah, I mean, I mean, he he's a he was basically a villain by the end. He killed. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, just just for just for um, mm-hmm. the things tight. Who's the girl next to uh, Sparrow? The left. Is that remember what she did? Can you see my screen? I yeah, can. Is that, really? is that Sam's girlfriend? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So why uh, would she be? Uh, where is no, she? But no, but next, next to High Sparrow right now. Yeah, yeah just do that. Yeah, uh, okay. it's yeah, more logical. All right, I got you. I got you. Then, um, who we got? Stannis, the Manus. Okay, really wooden. He actor. just, he just like, I mean, he, he takes walks he like a man. You know, just go on, do your duty. He knows he's done. He has, he does exactly. He's a man of his word. He's a man of honor, and he tried to fight for a throne that was rightfully his. And you know he he couldn't succeed. He lost. <laughs> and you gotta respect him for trying. We gotta respect him for putting. In he the died ground. like a. Yeah, he, he he kept going even after he was defeated because I don't even think he like wanted it for personal reasons, just because he thought you know he he had to and he, like it's his by right. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah, and it is, and he was right, and he was the only one that was right, and no one would support him because of his personality, because of his leadership skills. It just shows such a flawed man in this world being in the right and trying his damn hardest. And not being able to come out on top, and he was the, he was he was sabotaged by some messy writing in season five, and I still think that he he survives the messy season five writing, and I think he's more Brian credit than that. Um, in the books, dude, Patrick. In the books, Stannis is supposed to pop off. He is going to pop off. There are f- well, he's not dead yet in the books. Exactly, exactly. And really? He's, he, okay. he might actually win the battle at Winterfell that he lost in the show. I mean... Okay, well, that makes sense because in, in it, it kind of seemed like he was the right candidate. Right, that's what... Yeah, so my, my best friend, uh, Colin, uh, his favorite character is, is Stannis because... Right, no, a low, low S. Done. I can't complain. I think he's better than Daenerys. He's very respectable. And I think we can, get, mm-hmm. especially in the peak seasons of Game of Thrones, where they. In the, I like, but I like how you're you're feeling this from the book knowledge, because in the books he probably will have 
do something different. Yeah, I was just mentioning the book thing really quickly, but I th- it's important to note that in the show he is very well characterized, especially in the. the but in the seasons. show, he he does kind of die like a bitch. He's oh yeah, he great. does. But I think we got to give him more credit for being great in those peak seasons. Oh no, he doesn't die like. Accepts his death, you know. He says, "Go on, do your duty." You know, I, I tap out. Right, know? and he definitely didn't die like a bitch. Also, he fought in a raging battle I'm, and lost. I'm, yeah, you know, fought till the very end. You know. Yeah. I have no idea how 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 hard he fought, but I just know he got killed by Brian. At first, I well, remember that he was like the last surviving guy of the battle, and then two Bolton soldiers came over, and he was he completely injured, and he killed them both. Either way. Historically, when the, when the general dies in the battlefield, they usually are not the last person. The people target them. Right. Well, that's we that, that, that was the, that was the well, messy what? well that was the messy writing. That's yeah, that's yeah. the messy. We don't know writing, if you right. the last because it's like it was basically they all retreated and like they were stragglers in the forest. You know. It seemed like it was the battlefield anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, it was messy writing. It wasn't canonical. Books. Um, okay. Think, uh, All right. You know what? Let's put him under Ramsey because he lost to Ramsey. Mm-hmm. And uh, he really yeah. he he lived, he lived to Ramsey or was no he lost Lewis. to Ramsey. Yeah, he lost to Ramsey. Or well, was it was Ramsey's six? plan. It was Ramsey's plan. It was season six then? Well, it was season five. End of season five. Season five. Okay. Meantime, okay. Was Common. I forget, what happened in seven and eight? Common's just, just like seven and eight was just a bunch yeah. of shit. Like a gullible kid, basically. Yeah, you know? shot, yeah, a gullible kid. It's like he, I feel like he, he, he had at least a chance to be a good king if he, if he had survived, you know. Yep. And if the people around him weren't horrible. Yeah. yeah. And and he died before all the bad writing kicked in, so he escaped that. But he killed himself. Yeah, he killed himself exactly. So, um, I think he's not as good as Khal Drogo, but better than the High Sparrow. Yeah. The fuck is this? <laughs> The kid, sorry, the sorry. Joffrey's follow-up. Thompson? Thompson to the guy that took over Joffrey's job. Tommen, right? You're saying Tommen? Yeah, Tillman. Uh, yeah, um, he and... sucks. He's... I mean, he was sort of a boring guy. than the High Sparrow. No, he's worse than the High Sparrow. Right, I guess he the High Sparrow did beat him. Yeah, maybe there, yeah. All right, you know what? Let's just go D, you know? Oh, no, 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 don't do... Don't, I think he's better than the boring girl. Okay. But I do think. Right, definitely down down there. But I, you know what? In season four, he was characterized really well, especially when Tywin was in the mix and stuff. So he yeah. he had so his place in the story was very well defined. And I think we got to give him some credit for that. Well, no, he he, he didn't do virtually anything in season four. It went to be like season well, five. Exa- exactly, he didn't do anything. But I think him not doing anything showed that uh, Wait a minute. that he had a very. Uh, well Got more. Place. Remind me. Remind me what the guy with the crown did. Why, why is he like a who? Renly, this guy. Renly, what did he? Renly was. Uh, he had a great presence and was wasted. Hmm. Is he just going to get married at one point and then? He died? was going to get yeah. married to Marjorie. Marjorie. Yeah. And just, but he, did mean, he do anything up to that? He got killed he by just... a shadow monster. Was he, was he? What did he do? Like, did he ever do anything? He amassed a huge army that he was going to take King's Landing with, and then Stannis took it from him. He's and he's Rob's brother. And he's no, he's Stannis and Ro- yeah, Robert, King Roberts. Oh, he was wow. He's like a really young bro. Right. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. Now we got um. Okay, so he had a really he had a really strange. Yeah. Right. He was in the peak seasons of Game of Thrones, so he gets a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, this random... Marin Tran. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Marin Tran, it's like, Tran, yeah. it's like a very low secondary villain, but they put a lot of effort into building up to be like the biggest piece of shit ever, so you love when he gets killed. Right. You know? so, He's like a pe- oh, pedophile, you know? It's like, oh, let's just make him a pedophile. Right, let's make him as despicable as possible, while <laughs> the rating is still somewhat okay. <laughs> Uh, bottom C or above the boring ladies? Was this, was this guy like a, like like some guy who worked at like the port? <laughs> God, one of them. Who's this guy again? Like like the king he stuff. beat uh, yeah he beat Sansa like Joffrey ordered him to beat Sansa in front of him. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the guy that works for Joffrey. Yeah, pretty much. Um, he's he's, oh, he's Ellen, but he's like than Tommen, dude. Honestly, more interesting than Tommen. Just put him. Yeah, yeah probably there. Tyrion, Tyrion. Yeah, how can you not put him in A? 
It's like, that, that's not even debatable. Yeah. I mean, I mean see, like the, okay, the, season... I mean, the second half of the series, he's, he's not as... He's he kind of lost a little bit of this game. Right. But he's still but he's still better than most of the others in the second part of the series. I mean, you know, he has he got the nice quotes, you know. Right. You can't beat his charisma. You can't beat Peter. But Dinklage. from from season Henry. two to season four was was his apex. Absolutely. Henry and Renly. So Renly is Baratheon. Sir. Yeah. Then and then Gandry is who's Gandry? Gandry is a bastard son. He was later legitimized at the very end of the story by Daenerys. Even though it was terrible writing that made that happen. Um, okay, um, Tyrion, I guess you can clump Tyrion in with Jon and Daenerys because an amazing character wasted by the show wasting itself. Well, I mean, I mean, I think most of the characters in the last season were wasted. It's like... Right, exactly. They're all the, ma- all the main characters that we've been following for so long. Like they Even can- then, in season eight, you have, like, good quotes. It's like, you, you, you'd be surprised how great lengths I'd go to, st- to avoid joining the Army of the Dead. And I can think of no organization less suited to my talents. Like, even in season eight, he has some good quotes, sure, you know? Sure, yeah. So, so do you think... Do you think <laughs> yeah, it's Peter Dinklage. It's Peter, mm-hmm. it's Peter Dinklage. Like, it's hard to beat his charisma. He was always Tyrion. He always will be Tyrion. Even in the terrible season of Game of Thrones, he was Tyrion. Um, do you think that saves him from A tier? Can he climb up to S tier, even though the end of the show ruined him? Jamie did. He's definitely a really interesting. Jamie and Cersei did, and Sandor. The problem did too. with with him is that the show hinges on his dialogue wit a little too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in the peak Game of Thrones, that was kind of the point. He was the main character in Game. Of it Sandor. works. It works when it works, but something eventually it stopped working, and then it right. Exactly, said. you're exactly right. They just kind of used his dialogue as a crutch. Yes, you're right. So, Pat, we were yeah. thinking of grouping him in with Daenerys and Jon as as a yeah, yeah. great character. That's, that's actually very astute. Yeah, I don't think he's S. I think he's A. But he would have been S if the show was perfect all the way through. Just like Daenerys and Jon. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, Tywin, S tier. Tywin, S tier, yeah. My favorite character in the entire show. Basically, like the Logan. Yeah, he's Lord actually he that's a good point. He's a very interesting yeah, character. He's interesting. He's in control of everything. He's the antagonist. He's the protagonist. He plays all sides. He is literally the epitome yeah. of of a player in the Game of Thrones. He's just like an immovable object. Yeah, I have to wonder why he doesn't the throne for himself. He just seems because like he, he 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 says like he's basically the power behind the throne anyway. Yeah, he's like, the power behind the throne. He recognizes anyway. like you think a crown found gives you power. It's like. He actually said that, you know. Right. Yeah, he actually said that, didn't he? he was oh, he was on a whole other level, bro. The only mistake he made was was rejecting he his ch- son. Tyrion. Yeah, exactly. He he, he played he... everything else perfectly, and you can't even blame him for rejecting Tyrion because Tyrion was a disgrace to the family, not for being a midget, but like for like literally what he did, and also for being, being like a, a deviant. Yeah, and he dies in the deviant. toilet anyway. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. And he dies on a brown chair, so. Perfect character, perfect ending. Wasn't in the bad seasons. Uh, is he, all right, so let me ask you guys this. Above Varys. Yeah. Above Littlefinger. Uh, probably, yeah. Above mm-hmm. Sandor. I would say he's above even Robert Bradley. Above Robert, I agree. Yeah. Above Jamie and Cersei. Uh, he might be. He might be above. Oh, Ned. He might be oh. best. Can't be Ned, best. you think? I think he can be Ned, but he, I think he is second best. All right. I mean, I he he beat Ned at the end of the day, you know? Well, he wasn't yeah, even but that was, that was a, executed. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it took, like, many seasons for that to bear fruit. Uh, what, what? Uh, I mean, it was Cersei who foiled Ned. I think on a one-on-one on one on one showdown, he was Ned would have won. He didn't, the thing with, the thing with um, I win is that he didn't really have, like, a courtly personality. I mean, he didn't. He. I don't think he could really like convince people with his own like rhetoric. Yes, he could. He did it all the time. Yeah. In, the, in court, I don't know. Yeah, he like did he, all the time. Cersei was doing that for the most. No, part. Cersei was terrible at it and tried to learn from Tywin. I don't know. I. I, I don't. Maybe I'm missing things, but I think he was not that good at it. I think they they just knew that he had all this money. No, the the, the point of the show was that Tywin was the best of the best, and everyone knew it. Uh, he he was the best behind the scenes, but is is someone the, is in, in an argument? I don't think he would in an argument. He always it, won the argument. He won the argument. 
Oh, you're missing. No, I'm saying it wouldn't matter if he won or not because he just had so much pull. But at the same time, like if it were like in a court setting, I don't think he would have. Court? What do you mean court? He literally held court against Tyrion, and Tyrion did the only thing he could have possibly done. Against Tyrion, he, I think yeah, Tyrion might might work, but I don't think it would have worked against like the old guard of the fucking Barath Robert Baratheon. Mm -hmm. well, that's why he by he played the long game. Like he literally played it perfectly. That's what I'm saying is that that's why he's. That's I know, why but he, he would never as... do that in the first place, though, right? That's what I'm saying is that why that's why he didn't win initially. Yeah. Now he outpaced them. Basically, the biggest mistake he was was being such a dick to his son. You know. He was. He was a. He was a behind the scenes type of dude. You know, he was like a CEO. He wasn't the kind of guy who would waltz. He's in like Logan and... Roy, basically. And wasn't Thomas like a. Exactly. He wasn't like a superhero type dude. He was like a CEO. Well, I don't know. He did fight in multiple battles against Rob Stark, so he would be out there on the front lines. I don't know if he fought. The, in the field, everyone was. Well, he wasn't in the just... vanguard, but he definitely fought in the battles. You're uh -huh. giving him all this, like you know, this like, uh, uh, like imaginary credit. We not really, not really, not at all. No, he 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 stomped out the reins of Castamere. That's like. A whole thing that everyone in the show knows that that's the backstory. Um, he got rid of the Starks. He mobilized his entire, you know, of course he has all this power and he wields it cunningly, perfectly, ruthlessly. He's the reason Rob Stark dies. He's the reason Ned dies. He's and uh, and he's the reason he dies himself. Because no, no, he didn't have much to do no, with that. This is what you're saying, but we're not was... talking about, we're not just saying he, he beat the Starks. Incredible. We're saying that he's not... Um, is he a good character? And I think that when you have all this shadow power, sort of magically show up with like you know endless amounts of truth, that kind of thing is old. It also is not very sophisticated. It's not good writing. It is. Good I, writing. I, I it's do 100 think that despite all that, I listen. I, I do think despite all that, he is one of the best characters. I think his flaw is that he seems a little too powerful in, in ways that don't really add up. And I also think that in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark, maybe someone as equally distinguished as that, would seem sort of like this rich sort of guy, and he wouldn't be popular. because he. Ha but because those guys were killed off, ended up being by default. He wasn't popular popular, he just had shit tons of money. He was the Jeff Bezos. You know, so yeah, like, but how do you think he got all that money, though? By by ripping people off and making tons of money. Exactly. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that people like want to won't want to celebrate him. It just means that a guy with shit tons of money who works behind the scenes, and you know that that's that's an unnecessary person. I don't think that that's you know, that that could be. All right. Diminished. Well, how about how about we fall back on this? Crazy. His charisma, his personality, all of that elevate the character to to achieve that status. So he achieves that status through is, the way he comes really off. High. I'm saying the character is isn't really high. I'm just saying there's a reason that he's not like you know, like the ideal character in the show. I think Ned Stark or that. No, because. Because isn't every other character exactly what you're describing? Yeah, they have all this power behind the scenes. And when their power behind the scenes stop working, then they die. Right? Uh, no, I think, I, I think some characters can carry their own weight at the moment. I don't think, I don't think Tywin Lannister... Tywin Lannister literally was killed in the toilet by a... Yeah, that's, that's the exactly point. That's the point. point. He, couldn't even, he couldn't even get not, avoid getting killed by a fucking dwarf on a toilet. Just think about this. I don't think he's, he's an point. old guy. Like, that's the point. He have strength. I mean, like he was like you guy. know what's having strength? Living to the age of seventy in the world of Game of Thrones. Oh, you're that thinking takes about strength. Oh, Yo, you're thinking about the succession logic. I'm not thinking yeah. of succession logic. How modern, strong he is. He fought in battles. Life. He literally would fight in the battles at age 60, 65. He wasn't fighting that hard, dude. I, I promise you. He, he would be. He, he would put on the armor and he would get on top of a horse and he would be a there. Spoiled guy who, who fucking. He definitely was not a spoiled guy. His father. His father. The backstory is that the father started with no money and that Tywin built everything himself. Took all the money from the other Westerlands houses and built his his the Lannisters yeah, he was from spoiled nothing. At, that, at the age of seventy, he was. He was like thirty. He was. Okay, yeah, and you know what? He's entitled to be um, to be spoiled because he earned it. He earned it. I don't know what you're defending. He's a great character. I just don't understand. There's no detract. What you're saying is not a detractor at all. What you're saying is not a detractor at all, in my opinion.
He's not a best character. In the show. He's a great character, but he's like he's like the evil great character. Evan, you gotta help me out here. He's a great character. I mean, there's no detractors. I didn't say he wasn't a great character. Now you're putting words in my mouth. I will say that he was, uh, he just he was one of my favorite characters. I just don't think he's the best character in the show. Well, I didn't it's say like, he was the best character in the show. I said he's one of the best characters in the show. Well, I agree with you the whole time. Okay. And I, then I don't know what. Uh, then okay, I don't know what you're. I don't think saying. he's. A, I don't think he's better than Ned Stark because I think Ned Stark is the best character. And it's just like it, it's like you know, he, he, the devil is almost as powerful as God, but he's not more powerful. It's like that kind of thing. But the devil killed God. Died. If you're comparing, if you're saying Ned Stark is God. Die. No, we'll get then. Well, Ned we'll, died. We'll, that was the metaphor, but the show it's obviously deeper than actual. Well, I think that's what makes the show good is that the devil wins sometimes and God loses. No, he didn't. He didn't win. He was killed in the fucking toilet seat, uh, and he's always angry too. He's not living the best life. So you just you gotta like you know you, you gotta be objective. I do think he has a lot of success in, in very obvious ways. He does have a lot of influence over the characters, but really, no one trusts him. All, they're all waiting for his downfall, and he ends up getting killed in the fucking toilet by a dwarf. It's just, it, that is how he died. Well, it's he like, tried to hold it all together, and there was one piece that he had that, uh, and it's because Varus went behind his back, like, um... A fucking it, unit. Yeah, it was, it was, it, there was literally one element of all the things that he was holding together fell apart, and it was his own son. How is he supposed to predict that his own son is going to kill him? Like, his own, you know, Kinslang... So that's, 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 the, that's the, 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 statistically the most likely person to kill anyone is... The person that's, so that's the cost of being as powerful as someone like Tywin, I think, is that you have one thing that's super close to you is going to end up being your downfall. But it, but when he did have power... Boy, was he oh, at his phases. peak! I'll had tell you what. His money away to his wife. Right? I'm gonna he send to, you a. Um, lost half his money. Go to Supercuts know, Delight. Just I just made money. a great video, and it's about um, how why Tywin's the best character in Game of Thrones. He just came out with it like two days ago. Yeah, it's an, it's it's, it's wrong though. though. He's not the well, best character. No, he's one of the best characters. So. He's one of the best characters, but saying he's okay. The best oh, also, also, more. here's the thing: when Tywin died, everything else fell apart. So he was the glue holding everything together. He didn't together. have to, though. It very no, he, he, he like, had to. Well, guess what? Tywin had a fucking cousin from some other place. And he's gonna, you know, it could very easily just have some guy go up. Evan, anything to add? Thing he didn't build House Lannister. It's just like they were declining under his incompetent father, and he like, like built them back up and better than they used to be, sort of. No. Yep, that is, that is a factor. He's yeah. like a he's like a mogul, you know what I mean? He's not like the fucking great character based just because he's a mogul. He's a good character because he, you know he, he looks cool and he he shows up and says over things and he and he makes decisions, but decisions affecting other characters not because he has money. And that's because he has like power. Impossible. Because he has control. Well, what he doesn't? He, yeah, but he, he they always say he has control, but then why are the characters always doing things against him? Oh, he, they're trying to do things me. against him, but not trying to kill him. As you can see, when he died, everyone was pissed about it, except here. Everyone was pissed when Tywin Ty, Ty died, because okay. he was the only thing keeping it all together. I think we spend enough time on Tywin. I'm just saying. No. Just, I, I, don't, I don't, this don't think he's the best target. character. Evan, do you think he's the best character in the show? No, I don't know. I don't think, but... He, of he's I like... It's not, it's not the, the, the consensus. It's, he's the best character. I think it is... He is he is one of the best. One of the best. It's like being being fucking like you know money bags, I mean, like really, this being a Scrooge isn't really like a character. A really. successful Scrooge is a good character though. No, it isn't. It is though. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's not. I just don't it's see really why it wouldn't not. be. I just don't see why it wouldn't be. Why does it have to? Like this is kind of boring. Away. It's kind of. I just boring. feel like you're writing him off for like innocuous reasons. No, just, I'm not uh, writing him. That doesn't. Even, that sentence doesn't even make sense. Well, I'm writing him off because, because he's it, boring. So. In, in moments, All right, that you you're think not he's a little boring, but I think that's kind of also what makes him. So. You're saying that because he's boring, he's interesting. That doesn't make sense. It definitely makes sense. Absolutely, it makes sense. Oh, it doesn't make. He, sense. He, he's the most. He he plays things. It's about ruthlessness. It's about being cunning. Okay, and being cunning. Okay, you have to hide that all behind shit. Like, you you have to put up a veneer. 
and he he he, he, and it's, he plays his cards game. well. It's about playing his cards perfectly under a mask, you know. It's it's complexity. I, it's that's pure. Not, that's it's pure complexity, bro. It's pure it's complexity. Pure complexity. Not, is all I'm oh, saying. It's, not. That's, it's that's pure complexity. There, you would you and, would be hard pressed. Like. You would be hard pressed to find someone who agrees with you. I'm just saying. You're, you're gonna. We, 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 about Let's just what? move on, okay? <laughs> okay. We, we've Perfect. talked about. I don't know, bro. I could harp on this for a while, but I would not be hard pressed to find someone who. I, I, Evan, right here. That's a weird that group of people that would think Tywin's a bad character. I'm just saying. I didn't. No one said he's a bad character. Well, just let's just move on. Words, no. right. Well, clearly Tywin is a is a as a character of great debate. So you could debate yeah, on it a lot, you, which you're makes like me great. You're like all over Tywin okay. Lannister right now. I yeah, I'm not on Tywin. Tywin's a perfect Baldwin. character. I'm not all over. I love a circle. It's jerk. weird, man. He's a fucking he's a fucking like dark lord of money. You're like, oh, that's, that's original. It's not. What are you talking of money? It's of power, dude. It's about who's in control, baby. You know what He's I like? controlling the other people control. with money. You're, it's and, being in control in the world of Game of Thrones. It's not about money. It's being in a ruthless world with no rule, with lawlessness. You know, you know, he doesn't get lost anyway, so he didn't ultimately have that much control. Uh, he, he 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 did, well, his loss like was everyone's loss. Five years, dude. It's, it's like, like killing the guy at the. It's killing the guy at the center of the roots of the tree. It's like cutting down the tree as roots. What happens when that tree comes down? All the Are little beavers come about, around. About him. you're ranting about the fact that he's the end of scene. He's definitely he's one of the best characters in the show. One of the best characters it's in fiction. Not complicated. He's one of the best characters in fiction by by far. I don't know why you're making this All complicated. All of fiction. Bro. You're fucking crazy. I don't know why you're making this complicated, bro. It's pretty obvious. You're saying you're saying like like basically offensive statements okay of some guy that's, being yeah a, the best character in fiction. i think if it was offensive they you wouldn't don't even, you even read what are you even talking about okay can we um, just move best character in game of thrones sure fine um well, all right it's not the best character in game of thrones one of them you don't want one of them, them, man. One of them. One of them. okay he's one um okay viserys um basically not in the show a long long time but Kind of like a, a key thing in showing like how Daenerys's life was, you know, before just like they had to deal with this absolute, you know, monster as her brother. Mm -hmm. Great obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, definitely in Game of Thrones' most formative season, um, gave you an idea of how evil characters could truly be. Um, I think it was a great symbol for the evil in the world of Game of Thrones. Um, in season one, they played it perfectly because all the writing was pretty much um, on point. So, Pat, uh, which who this guy? Yeah. Okay, uh, remind me who this is because I, I barely remember. He got gold poured on his head. Is this early on? Early on. Yeah, he's like probably the first major character to die. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Weird, yeah. Um, it's always well, interesting by dint of that, but beyond that, you know, it's like, who really gives a shit? Uh, I think, uh, probably a C somewhere. Cause maybe lower, because he doesn't. He's not. Yeah, maybe just like lower. well, because it's interesting, you have to give a little credit. But yeah, maybe lower. Maybe above uh, High Sparrow. I don't know if it's super. Maybe, maybe yeah, maybe because it's a little more interesting. Yeah, because that season one vibes with it, you know. Yeah, well, you know, Cal Drogo was in the same season as him. Maybe we just put him next yeah. to Cal Drogo. Above or below? I don't know. Below. Yeah, but why not? I don't know. I don't, I don't know him that well. Maybe above. I really don't know anything about okay. him. Say. I think the just grouping them is good. Um, Melisandre, her character was just all build up, completely wasted. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. wasted. I would say. Just appears to die. High D. Let's say high D. Yeah, high, yeah. She had good, Above Hot Pie? She was a real hot pie, you know. She was pretty hot. Um, but hot pie is equally as hot, so maybe I'll put her below hot mm -hmm. pie. Um, okay, Yara. She kind Yara. of was like a nothing character. Like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Didn't stand out all that much. Um, D or C? Probably C. Um, because not because Theon had a huge, compelling redemption arc, and she kind of was just there. 
Yeah. So she's not up with Theon? And she was, like, completely, like, she was in season two, like, a tiny bit of season three, and then she just, like, out until, like... Right, exactly, exactly. Right, rescue him, you know? Yeah. Um... Pat? Uh, I, I can't recognize this girl. I, she doesn't seem... Uh, we can put her in... Uh, she's not that bad of a character. When she shows up, she says... Uh, she does competent things, like... Um... But she just doesn't have any presence in the show. I think b- b- bottom of C tier would be perfectly fine. The lowest of the low. Uh, Ygritte. Oh, she had like the best chemistry with John. Though. Yeah, they're married now. Married, married in real life. Yeah, married in real life. Um, she was a great like juxtaposition. She challenged John's ideas in a really great way. Um, uh, I think she, you know, died too soon, but that was kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah, um, she wasn't, like, wasted too much. No. Um, yeah. No. It's like she he showed is, that John is the one and the regulars can get along for later in the story, you know? That's kind of her point. More Why? interesting than Mel Sandra like, or whatever. Yeah, right, that sounds good. Like, see? Yeah, that, we're right there seems... Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, Oberyn. Now this is a character over I have an easy S tier too. This is even where... though he's less, even this though guy was, this guy was a, a fun, uh, what a menace, right? Mm-hmm. Fun menace. Yeah, really fun, great charisma, added an entirely new element of unpredictability to the show. Well, yeah, he died. Wait, I mean, he he I know he's supposed to die at that point, but a lot of people felt like, oh, this would be like a big new player, and then he just dies, you know, mm-hmm. and the door. Um, right. He so uh-huh. so. What season four did at peak of Game of Thrones was, like, challenging status quo. And, like, going back to Tywin a little bit, here's an interesting thing that we didn't point out about Tywin. He kind of represented the status quo of the dynamics in King's Landing at the time. He was the one that kind of, like, everyone was afraid of him, and he had all the control, and everyone was annoyed that he was in their way. And Oberyn comes in and directly challenges that because he's saying, oh, you ordered the death of my niece and nephew, you know? Um, so yeah. shaking up the entire King's Landing plotline was, you know, we got to give him all the credit in the world for that. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, he was definitely like a heroic character, and did he? Yeah. Like, like I was saying before, he was like a kind a of character, character that like had like a lot of like strength and like like you know he could like command a room. Like that didn't work for him ultimately. He was a little short sighted, and he didn't got get injured in, in the. Um, he definitely had a lot of like you know the personality, just and just you know he was a good fighter too. Yeah, um, I loved his that scene against the mountain was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Um, all right, so above Varys. Yeah, above Littlefinger. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, would say, I would say maybe worse than Littlefinger. He did. He was short lived, and he kind of died like an idiot. And... Mm-hmm. He shouldn't have died like an idiot. Um, his personality carries him a long way. Does anyone want to give him points for personality, bringing him above Sandor? I, do you think Baratheon yeah. would be a little bit in the same boat? The ultimate sort of suave, charismatic, you know? Um, so maybe... Right there? Yeah, maybe like that, yeah. Cool. Oh my god, F tier. Oh my god, this terrible character. You're on Greyjoy. You're on Greyjoy. Frat boy. Oh, it's so annoying. Annoying, so terrible character. Didn't fit into the universe at all. Nightmare, my literal nightmare of a character. Now that the most shallow, basic concept of a character. Um, crazy pirate. Yeah, know. crazy pirate. Yeah, that's literally it. Might as well just have Johnny Depp play. I mean, oh, do about no, it. Right? No, right, no, no. Um, everyone okay with F? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, Mance Rayner. Yeah, he was, he was Mance funny. Rayner, he was in a ton of scenes. Okay, fine. Top. Yeah, top. Yeah. Um, I feel like Mance Rayner, he wasn't in a ton of scenes, but he made his impact on the ones he was in. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, what else was that actor in? Yeah, no, I don't, he was like Stephen Wolf in the terrible Justice League movie. Um, hmm. Yeah, he, you know, he wasn't in a ton of scenes, but in, at peak Game of Thrones, he had some great uh, presence. Uh, when this he guy, was, uh, was this guy the, the, the leader of the wildlings? Yeah, wildlings. Oh, okay. I think he could yeah. go next to G or Mormont because they were direct rivals, and they both had great impact in the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones. Next to G or, 
It's weird. In the books, he's like actually still alive. They faked his death. Yeah, they faked you know? his death. Yeah. Uh, he said to like rescue um. Uh, it's kind Sansa. Of Sansa. Fake Arya. Or Arya. Yeah, fake Arya. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was, that you know Jane uh, Poole. That was like, like it's like horrifying what they say happened to her. You I know? know. I know. It's, it might be worse than Reek. It's like it's, it's like one of the darkest sort of you know scenes that they the books have done. You know yeah, that they probably yeah. bad in the like, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't, I don't, I. Don't, I don't know if what they did to Gene Poole was worse than Reek, but definitely on the same level. <laughs> oh, they, they didn't participate in the books. They made Reek participate, right? Yeah, and then Ramsey like sent his dogs to rape her too. Yep. Jesus Christ, the books just really just don't pull any punches, do they? Oh man. Um. Yeah. That's how bad Ramsey could be as a villain, right? Uh-huh. Um. Okay. The Mountain. Not really. Oh, doesn't I... really have a character, but very cool. Very cool. Gosh, I don't know how to rank him because he, he's cool. He's a strong, it's a giant, giant, you know, lumbering beast, basically. Lumbering it? beast. Is there anyone on like, the like, list like him? Like the second half. Is he might be like Cal Drogo, like just kind of beastly character. I always found him very, very captivating. I would say even a low B. The low at the lowest end. Of... All right, yeah, he's he got recast like three times. Isn't that funny? Weird. Yeah. Because he had he had the suit of armor yeah. on helmet. Um. Yeah, I put him uh, bottom of B. He's he, he's cool when he's on screen. Um, he get, you know he gets ruined in the in the later seasons, but his character isn't has was never really a thing. So he turns into a matter. zombie. Basically. Well, he's not he's not like a like a like a character with personality. He's just like a figure of this big lumbering, you know. Sort of killing machine. Oh, really. He does have more personality after he gets that disease, or and he has to like, he gets reanimated like Frankenstein, and he has mm-hmm. a little more personality then. He's pissed off. He's like neither living nor dead. But overall, yeah, he's more of like a like a gimmick. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but like a good gimmick. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Um, Ollie. Ollie. I mean, terrible, right? <laughs> Right? Shit. Yeah. It's, like, weird. Like, his character, like, it's, it's obviously noticeably aged because he's going through puberty, even though, like, the season five and six is supposed to be, like, literally right back after. Back to back, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that... Yeah, he actually has a really sympathetic opening. Yeah. Um, which is really interesting. Like, his entire family gets murdered by Ygritte and the Wildlings, and you're like, oh, yeah, like, obviously I want to support this kid. And then he just kind of becomes like an annoying, really badly written character. He kills Ygritte, mm-hmm. which sucks. Um, that was unnecessary. Um, maybe we'll give him D, you know, because he, he he had a he had a compelling backstory. I think, and he actually did stuff. Um, yeah, you know, he did more things than Melisandre. Like, what the hell did Melisandre do? At least this kid tried to kill Jon Snow and. Um, and what else? And killed Ygritte. He literally killed John and Ygritte. So, um, but then Melisandre yeah. did bring him back. So, so maybe under Melisandre. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Okay, so this one hurts my soul because Barristan Selmy in the books is amazing. Who's yeah. okay in the, in the, in the, in the show? He's in the show. Yeah. He but died. He really like, deserved like, more. I like how he died. Yeah, he yeah, I didn't like how he died either. He was such a badass, and he just got killed. Right. Just a waste. Got killed yeah, wasted by bad writing, yeah. I think he can go any... alongside Grey Worm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just an okay character and very mid-character. Yeah, actually better than Grey Worm. At least he, at least he had charisma. Uh, oh, yeah, better than Sam. Better than Sam. I would say better than that Wildlings. I don't really Dude, remember. I think Renly can go down a few pegs. Yeah, that's another one. Evan, would yeah. you agree? Um, okay. Um, ready? I think lower than Cal Droga. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, all right. Oh, we're coming to the home stretch, boys. Let's finish this Let's finish this thing off. 1-1. Um, one, r- one. Random giant 1-1, one, one. yeah. I mean, that's good CGI. Say yeah, that. Very good CGI. You got to give him credit for that. Uh, mm-hmm. He died. Ramsey killed him. That was sad. I was like, yeah. Um, I don't know. He's really a non-character, but we could just put him in C, like bottom of C. Yeah. 
Jojen Reed did nothing for brand. The brand storyline was completely useless. I think we just put him in shit. Yeah. Um, Bella Ramsey. This was her like career defining performance. Yeah. Before even, last. Right. Even even the, when the show was bad, she was very she cool. So, seeing she was yeah. A fun character. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So higher C or like. Yeah, mid C. Higher than the the yeah. pedophile guy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Merit trash, brand storyline trash. Um, hmm. uh, <laughs> Three-Eyed Raven. Three-Eyed Raven. He was he was okay. He was portrayed pretty well. He was a very famous actor playing him. Put him higher than the yeah. Breast Theater. Breast theater for, uh, Where the hell did the Breast Theater go? Oh, yeah. Oh, higher than funny. Lancel. Um, and I don't think Maybe he's higher below. than these guys because these guys all actually participate in the story. This guy has like one scene, so. Um, and okay, last but not least is Kyburn. I used to say that this guy was my favorite character in the show because I just liked his vibe. Like I had no clue what it was, but like I was like, "Yo, this guy's vibe is kind of." Who, who is he? Like an advisor? Or yeah, something? advisor to Cersei. Yeah, like kind of maester, like pseudo maester. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jeffrock. Mm -hmm. He brought the oh. mountain into a zombie, right? Uh -huh. Wait, oh, that's the guy. I keep confusing him with this the sparrow, but did he replace? Uh, he wasn't the maester. He replaced Grand Maester Pycelle, right? It, okay. Yeah. What did the high? So the high sparrow didn't replace Pycelle. This guy, Kyber. No, Cersei did. Do you think he's better than a uh, uh, Pycelle or? Mm, I think he wasn't in the. Like the good seasons of Game of Thrones, so he's detracted by being in the bad seasons of Game of Thrones where Pycelle wasn't. Okay, okay. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's definitely like intriguing and like he gets certain things done that only he could do, but. Maybe like next to Sam. Maybe like under Sam, you know? Maybe uh, above Sam. Maybe above Sam. I think above Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Here's the list. Okay. Right. So, right. Uh, let's look at it. Let's, we're, how are we on time, by the way? Oh, we're we're going crazy. We're at an hour and thirty eight. We're doing good. Yeah, I gotta go to bed. Do you do the video editing, or do you? Are you gonna send me? I'm gonna send it to you, unless okay, you want to okay. pay me or something. <laughs> um. All right. Um. Uh, I'm sorry no, about the Taiwan you, argument, but well, at least it was fun. Doing enough work that I would be pay you, but yeah, yeah okay. no, yeah, no, it's not that hard. Um. Sorry about the time and our argument, but it was kind of fun going back and forth with you. Oh, you know, man, I, I apologize. I, uh, I probably I probably shouldn't have ad hominem. I think I insulted you. No, <laughs> you talk to me in the way that all my friends talk to me, so you're good. Okay, well, at any rate, man, I've been after going through this, I realized I had a lot of gaps in my knowledge on this stuff. I'm really I'm gonna read the books. And, uh, well, do it because you want to, you know, because you enjoy it. No, I've been thinking about it the whole time. I'm like, oh, I need to rewatch. Oh. You'll love them. The books are oh, and, the books are and so. And I read the book. I've been meaning to. Um, the only reason I haven't is because I uh, wanted to get like a collector's edition box set. Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to read online. That's right, I got you. I got you. Um, you want to do a um, quick little outro, real quick? I'll just I'll step back from the mic. Mike, you got it, so that'll be in the footage. Well, no, yeah, okay. I think I'm sort of doing it anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, so books I'm gonna read, and then I'm gonna. Maybe I'll do more insight on these kind of topics after I read those books. Do the Remembering Truth podcast at uh, you know YouTube slash Remembering Truth. You can find the website at www.projectbellerophon.com. But mostly you can just kind of find it on Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you get your uh, podcasts, anywhere you stream videos, basically. And uh, we're going to do a lot more pop cultural topics. We also talk a lot about me medieval history. And if you think that this show right now has nothing to do with medieval history, you are totally wrong. A lot of the characters on this show are like paralleled in, uh, you know, in real documents in the Middle Ages. Also real stories that were written in the Middle Ages and centuries after. Romantic period. Um, yeah, I think without any more commotion. You can uh, I've called a wrap more or less. All right, awesome. Yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks uh, Patrick for having me on. You can follow me on 
uh, the Master Vader podcast on Instagram. That's Master Vader podcast. You can follow us also at Zero Dark Nerdy podcast. You can follow us on Instagram there as well. That's Zero Dark Nerdy podcast. Patrick, thanks again for having me. It's been a real treat. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.